All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you're all doing well. We're back with a Team FFA tournament, so it's going to be myself and Gunhound teaming up as usual, trying to take the W here, and the first map is going to be the Confluence, man. How you doing? You ready to go? I'm doing good, man. Uh, coming, you know, a couple weeks ago on my birthday stream, we went out on the W. I we did. I keep that going. Yeah, man, we'll get it. I believe in it. This is a great map too. So Confluence is a season one map. It's from like the early days. And um, yeah, it's really fun. You kind of, each team is going to get their own island, I think. Although it might, like, wouldn't it be interesting if they put like, just like Thunderdome, like, like just little 1v1s on each island? That would be, uh, that'd be pretty interesting for sure. <laughs> I, I have seen it make a mistake before in team games where it actually... Uh basically took it where two people would have been on each of the four islands and then shifted it one yeah so each island had two t had one person from two separate teams on it mm. so that that could happen that could happen for sure yeah mm. it has been a pleasure so how it's going to go down is we're going to play this first game if we win of course we'll move on to the finals it's uh two rounds we have a bunch of pods filled with eight players and the grand finals, uh, regardless of the circumstances, if we lose, you all end up casting it. And if we do win this round, then we'll end up playing in it live. And uh, and then if, if we get knocked out at that point, at some point during it, we can uh, we can go and like look at the replay and all that, or just jump into the live cast. So let's go for a conquest victory. All right, man. I'm ready whenever you are. No rush. How are the other pods looking? Uh, looks like uh, pod one has started. I think the next pod's about to start. Uh, but I think everybody's pretty much good. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. So we're going Mongols and Roos. Um, I don't know how good Roos are these days. This map doesn't look great for trading, but Roos can definitely like build quick palisades and secure the uh, the little like bridge crossing. So I'm hoping that will be a decent strategy for us in conjunction with uh, the Roos fishing ability as well and the good wood economy to kind of play the river. So <laughs> Got to get that good wood. Yeah, that's what she said. So... Dude, I'm, I'm ready for it, man. It looks like uh, everybody's good except Melvin. Although I think Melvin's probably here. So looking yeah, at the teams, he... we got HRE, yeah, HRE and the Ottomans. And then we have French and HRE and Mongols and French. Mongols seem to be pretty popular with their ability to like just basically survive. Okay, it said Melvin crashed. Don't start yet. So. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, so we got a little bit of time. No worries, Melvin. Restart your game. And uh, let's just hope you don't crash in the actual game. be the king. <laughs> Melvin is in chat, sire. Yes, he is. It's been a while since we've had age. When was the last stream? Yeah, I guess it was like a week ago. ISP. Oh my god, these guys are like able to have a full conversation with these like emotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, we had, I think, two matches or two streams last week. I know we had the tournament stream, and, and then yeah, and then I think you had some one v ones in there. We had a little sweaty one. Uh, Melvin says you need to kick him from the lobby because he can't rejoin. He's like stuck. Okay, so he should be able to rejoin here. We got you, Melvin. No worries. I see your I see your message in chat. <laughs> we'll get you back in a second. Yeah, perfect, man. Perfect. It's gonna be good. Battle of battles. Is killing me. Uh, if only they would just do one little quality of life thing and make my friends list alphabetical. Yeah, it's oh yeah. I find in so many modern games, just like. One of the biggest obstacles to having effective play is just like straight up trying to get people in lobbies. Like t in Total War, like we have no chat. Lobbies are like often region locked. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. It's just super troll. Is there a way to mute mute those? I mean, it's funny, of course, but <laughs> after after a uh, while, it's kind of like yeah. Not that I've seen. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm like looking the gameplay settings. All right, looks like he's back, so we could probably get started here. Okay, is this? Do you just have to like suffer it? Cause like, what if you're in like a team game and somebody just like spams it the whole time, you know? Yeah, I think at that point you just have to turn down chat, like or like the game. Yeah, you just have to mute the audio suck. and just just live in silence. Yeah. All right, looks like Melvin's good, man. Uh, I'm good. You all set? I'm good. Let's let's hope you don't crash mid game. Yeah, it should be fine. All right. Good luck. Thank you guys for joining. It's go time, man. The team tournament of the gods. We will hopefully become the Corsair Lords. Lord of the Rings, that's the Corsairs of Umbar, right? You would know. You've, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. I think they have a, a faction that you can play in uh, in the Lord of the Rings tabletop game, but the models are like super haggard. Yeah, they're like... Oh, I'm sure. They're really bad. <laughs> Especially since a lot, they take a lot of their cues from the uh, films, and so that's not really... Yeah, 
like barely i mean it's like barely shows up in the extended edition yeah they return of the king yeah i think like peter jackson is playing one of them in that if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. right isn't he like one of the corsair pirates yeah he's the one that uh legolas <laughs> they're gonna shoot a arrow across and then gimli hits legolas's bow and it hits him like right in the chest <laughs> Yeah, it was great, man. Those models are really good. You can get um, one of the tabletop armies you can play with the Lord of the Rings is um, is the, it's called the Return of the King Legendary Legion, and mm-hmm. you, you get to bring uh, Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn, and then the Army of the Dead, so the Dead of Dunharrow. So it, it's pretty cool, and that's oh, like your that's your whole army. So you have those three heroes leading the uh, the Ghostly Legion, which is which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's hot okay. volume. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. For for as much as I I love. Uh that part of the film that that's one of the adapt, or adaptations that i not a big fan of from the books mm. uh not not the film overall but that particular scene like the battle of pelinor field where aragorn shows up with the army of the dead so what's the discrepancy what's like the difference because i haven't read the lord of the rings books since maybe like 2002 so <laughs> i don't remember so it's been a long the time. army of the dead never makes it to pelinor fields oh seriously they come out of the uh, the the uh, past, okay, and they help them take the ships. But there's also like the other uh, Dunedain Rangers who show up uh, after the Battle of Helm's Deep, who are with Aragorn. Oh. So there's like twenty other like Dunedain Rangers like him, and also Elrond's two twin sons. Oh, that's and awesome. they they get on the ships like the 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 ghost army helps them take the ships and then they free the slaves of the ships and then they all sell the ships down and they come, you know, uh, come ashore and, uh, it, you know, uh, near off Skiliath. And, uh, so you get this whole thing where the like slaves and Aragorn and all them come together to, uh, to do this. You know, I think I would have actually preferred that. That sounds, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a, that would be really cool to see all the Dunedain Rangers. Mm-hmm. And the two like twin sons of Elrond that you don't ever get cut out of the movie completely. Yeah, yeah. I dude, I I did not recall that detail. And and it's just cool because then uh, Aragorn kind of fights his way, you know, from the coast and like fights his way back to um like basically onto the Pelennor fields and as Aemir and them are fighting out and they like meet each other on the battlefield kind of thing. Dude, yeah. That that actually would have been really cool. I mean I the Ghost Army part was fun and all, but yeah, it sounds like that would be that would be a little bit better. Is one of those things I think that I mean it was for simplicity's sake for <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. You know Do you, do you see Pone in chat, Gunhow, not to interrupt you? I do see him now. He's 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 asking how we haven't lost yet. <laughs> Listen, Dude, the worst, the worst. Yeah, you know, from the guy who was like constantly like trying to beat you at uh. He he did beat me yesterday though. He did get me yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He, he beat you once. No, he beat me a couple times in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm using the wrong hotkeys. I was using the Company of Heroes attack move hotkeys. Of course you were. I was like, why are they not moving? Okay. It's probably when you play too many RTS games. <laughs> you get right. loops up. Okay, so yeah, we need to we need to become the Corsair Lords. Mm. Okay, so villager, just chill here. Let's go down south. Maybe turn in. Let me know if you see some more deer encampments also. There's one right next to us. Like yeah. right in between us. Yeah, yeah, I see that one in the south. Perfect. So Wow, we have four deer camps on this island. That's that's pretty a pretty solid little bounty. Yeah. Okay, let's get you busy. I think the early wheelbarrow is worth it. Just continue scouting the island. Villagers hustling to the shores. Gonna try and get some uh, some water going. That was a good bur- that was a good burn though earlier for sure. Okay, where are we at? Yeah. Well, now we just prove prove him wrong. I know we gotta win. Can't let Pwn just put us put us down. Treat us like trash. <laughs> also, we have to uh, we have to stop uh, Smeagol. Oh yeah, well you know now that we're playing normal maps, it's gonna be harder for Smeagol because he doesn't have as many places to hide. Well, and also, <laughs> um, 
This is if he wins this one. He's won the past two. What a champ, dude! Yeah, that's awesome. So if he wins this one, uh, he's already won three. So him and Uravity are tied. I think, and also Anatan are tied for having the most. The most. Wins. The most Ws. Yeah. Uh, they all have three, uh, but this would Chris would be the first person to have uh, three in a row if he wins tonight. That would be pretty. That would be super impressive, dude. Has he just been? Has he just been training in the shadows or what? I mean, he's been playing all the FFA or uh, yeah FFA games that they're doing in the uh, chat all the time. I mean, he's just yeah hard at it. He's training. Hey, Doctor V, thank you for the tenor. Hopefully we can do you proud. Okay, am I gonna get 250 bounty? That's good, because that gives us the tier two. Nice. And I can go hunting on other islands here. Okay. I saw that Khan come by and I was like, I was like, wait a second, whose Khan is that? Oh. I thought we were being raided already. Okay, a little bit of a slow age up since we're going for water, but it's worth. It's 100% worth. Okay, let's go drop that off. Take you guys back, do this. Drop off all that food. Probably go with Trade House. I think that's the smart play. Keep hitting up the river. How's everything looking on your end, man? You're going for a silver tree, so um, is there a trade post on our island? I don't think there is. I think there's two trade posts, and I don't there. Think there is. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there is, my dude. Okay, where's the but other? I, I will say every island does have its uh, own uh, sacred site. Yeah. Okay. So at least we got a little something, something there. Okay, let's grab a couple of you guys, turn in, and uh, we can build the Golden Gate. Um, let's build that down here. Okay, Golden Gate's coming up. Looking okay. And uh, do we still have a villager down here fishing? We do. So the bridges are, they're kind of oddly placed. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with it, but they're, yeah, they're... Uh, well, and there's also to the very north there, uh, an actual, uh, like, pass across the water oh seriously oh i didn't notice that yeah. okay good yeah I'll, I'll uh i'll wall that up when we can gotta secure our uh secure our lands here all right let's go look for some deer on the other side see if i can find anything do some scouting as well get some upgrades and uh i need to start spamming out hunting cabins wherever i can yes give me your sheep precious fishing boat's gonna be Giving us really, really good food saturation. Um, definitely going to go 2TC. Yeah. The fact that we can get these Palisade Walls definitely uh, makes me feel a little bit safer here. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Okay. They're, they're walling up here. We got Evan. Evan's Joy. Or Evan Joe on the bottom here. Okay. Looking good. Yeah. Let's just, let's just scout this whole island together and see what's going on. And you guys can come down here. Here's a, if you need it, there's some more deer over here. That they nice, haven't. you found a deer camp? Hell yeah, dude. Yep, it's on the other island, but they haven't touched it yet. Wow, are we actually being shot by a galley on the river there? From Melvin? Huh. It's an interesting. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting popped here. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're trolling us a little. They actually won't be able to even harass our navy here on the bottom side, because the bridge the bridge blocks them from getting that way. You see any more deer around? Uh, just that one on the other island across that you're at. Um, but I'm scouting around. Trying to get some walls set up here. They probably if they didn't get the one deer camp. Hey, Thorfindel, thank you. Thank you for the donation, my friend. Trying to get some dread walls up. You see some deer? Oh no, the con. Yeah. He had a good run. That's he, all right. he had a good yeah. run. He he did his job. Yeah, he tried. Alright, let's go Not finish like the Not like I don't get another one for free. You do get another one for free, right? How long does it take on the con? Right. Uh it's uh like two minutes, but you know. Oh wow, we actually already have some trade going on this island. So they they have a trade post on theirs. Okay. So yeah, they they're gonna be. I don't know how how good it'll. It's only eighty gold, so it's not like really strong trade, but. but it's, uh, yeah, adds up uncontested. Hey, we found another deer camp here. If I could get that five hundred bounty, dude, that's gonna be sweet. Okay. Update that. Need to secure the top. 
make a couple knights just to uh, grab some ground, and uh, we need to save up for the second TC. Okay, so just need one more of that, and we should be okay. Gonna get a couple of roost knights just to uh, clear out the boars. Let the horses feast. I know we will. <laughs> Let the horses feast on, on, on grass. Board. Okay. So we got that up. They're just boat camping this. So you can head back to the base. Melvin's getting pretty ornery here. Like attacking with his dudes. He's been like chasing me around. Okay, let's see if I can get these scouts back. I think we're just going to flee back. Oh, hold on. We found another encampment. Oh, they, they started to deny. All right. All right, so let's go get the pigs. I think we have a pig over here. And outstanding, so we should have enough stone, so we just need to save up a little bit of wood now. So we know they're trading on bottom. Okay, take this guy down. Outstanding, all right. No more annoying scout in our lands. Wahoo. I know, man. HRE grabbing relics. Not much we can do about that. Let's grab this and set you up uh, over here. Do that. Looks good. So now I just need to save up some gold. Secure that top if possible. Alright. The Roost Knight's coming over to get the bounty. We're almost at max bounty, so that's pretty good. Our food gathering rate will be increased. Holy shit, there's already they're fighting on that island already. Alright then. Okay, we got stone walls coming Ballsy. up in the top. You see that from Melvin? Yeah. Okay. So we got to be privy to that. Okay, we're max bounty now. Take one of you guys, go up here. Definitely going to go Chad Sky a Tower. Castle Age will be upon us soon. How's everything going for you, man? Going good, just uh, about to start some military. Some crazy Wolo Lows going down over there. You seeing that? It's just like, <laughs> these guys are going at it. Okay, if I could, if I could, I, that damn galley, I can't really, like, get rid of it. All right, so for this, let's see the high trade house. Is there a good spot for it? Probably, like, right here is decent. Actually, hold up. So let's get you guys, do this, and uh, do the high trade house, like, right here. I think it's a pretty good spot. All right, we got another pig here. Let's take it out for the money. I can't, I can't quite get rid of that, that damn galley right there. I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna try a good curl tie this time. Yeah, you're going curl tie? The, the high micro landmark? Yeah. Get yeah it, we'll get see it. how that goes. You'll be fine, dude. I believe in you, man. Okay, so we got a little stone going. We got ships all up in the river. Dude, green's getting real ornery, dude. You see him? Yeah, it's uh, a little spicy. Yeah, he's getting kind of angry over there. I almost want to, like, just go sweep him out of the river. Which, I'm going to go see if I can sneak a dock there and see if he sees it. Okay, so that's enough. Let's keep making fishing ships. Wonder where we're going to get attacked from first. But yeah, our game plan is going to be a corner wonder from you. Like, that's, I think, our primary one. Because getting a... This is one of the hardest maps to actually push people. Um, it's very, very difficult. Okay, how much are we actually getting from this? Uh, 230 gold a minute. It's pretty respectable. Pretty respectable. Okay. Let's get you guys up. Okay. Let's get you on this. These guys come up here. And, uh, yeah, all's good in the realm. Let's get the fishing upgrade since it's one of our primary food sources, which, of course, we'll have to switch out of eventually, but... And uh, how are we looking here? We almost got the sneaky sneaky going. Get that and get that. All right. So we're hanging in there, guys. Gunhound and I planning some schemes. Sort of. I don't know. Do we have a plan? I feel like we don't, but who needs one? Uh, the, the plan is to win. Yeah, the plan is just to take the take the W. Okay, people reaching Castle Age. Got two TCs. Got good economy here. We have the trade house, max bounty. So villager, yeah, it's food gather rate and hunting cabin additional resources as well. Okay. So we need to do this. Hey, Warpug, thank you, man. This is the time of the stream. Turn gunhound, take the gold. I feel it in my bones. That's right, man. See, Pwn, that's how you should. That's how you should be treating us. 
Um, all right. Let's get this set up and this. Yeah, so that should be a, a good run of hunting cabins. Get upgrades. And uh, how many relics do we have on the island? Looks like we have two. Yep. Okay, so I'll just I'll just grab those with uh unless do you want to get the relics? No, you're good, man. You want me to grab them? Okay. Yeah, if you want to grab them and then um at some point maybe set up a market, but Sure. Yeah. It won't be worth a whole lot, but I'm gonna put a, a market on the like the tip of the like the far eastern point of the island for you, yeah? Yeah. That'll work. Out by the sacred. Yeah, out by the sacred, brother. Works for me, brother. Yeah, you get that trade going, we'll uh, call it a day. Sounds good to me. Okay. Let's get this. Oh, he's his homeboy's already getting demo ships on the shore and everything. Green's getting real crazy. Okay, I'm almost ready to go Imperial here. Just need a little bit more gold. So let's turn you guys in. Come over here. Take this. <laughs> Warbug is clearly confused. <laughs> Says phone. <laughs> oh my god, dude. All right, let's grab the relics. Come back here. Good food in the river. Oh, look, they're trying to demo me out of the river. <laughs> they don't want any of that. That's fine, I'll take it. It's fine, I can just build another dock. All right. One of, it sounds like your Uvu just broke down. Yeah, just put a new one up. So I'm gonna build um, Chad Skaya in the corner. Okay. And uh, we'll use it to eventually, you know, secure the uh, to secure the wonder. I'm setting up by that like back gold node. Should be a good spot for it. Okay, market set up by the way. All right, got it. Sounds good. So going imperial here. The fishing is is pretty serious. We're not going to be the first imperial since we went two TC, but should be in the ballpark. Um, yeah, let's just like go for a desperate play here. See if we can grab this. The roost teleporting fishing boats. We're gonna get shot, but it's it's worth finishing this wall so we just can't get ran through here. Alright. Great. Okay, so we can go ahead and do this and get galley. Got hunting cabins getting set up all over the map. So who's who Melvin's on eight man's team, right? Yep. Okay, I think I think uh, they they're probably, from what I saw, the most experienced opponents we have in here. So if probably. we could if we could take them out first, then that would probably be good. Spaskaya Tower going down to the back. And uh, then you guys can come over here and hit up this boar. Uh, villager count's looking good. You got trade going? Yep. Awesome, dude. Get you, do this. And I should be able to build stone walls for us soon. Awesome. All right. So we could do this, and uh, how do we want to do that? Could be a little bit expensive, but I think worth. Just to make it harder. If they want to do naval landings, that's one thing, but can't make it easy for them. No. Okay, so yeah, they got they got like all the walls and everything that you could possibly hope and dream for here. Okay, siege equipment, houses, villagers coming to get the boars. This guy's not building the walls. Gotta love it. Let's go down here, grab this. Or we could just, the problem with just chilling on the island though is like people people will just happily go for wonders. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Just sit and there it's, and take all the stone. Yeah, and this map is very much like like a wonder Helm's DP I mean, kind of map. And Melvin is French, so I mean, yeah. he could be just sitting there banking stone the whole time. And yeah, be is he French? And roll. That's what he is, yeah. okay, he is, he's actually French. Okay, gonna make some ships here. Thank you again, Warpug. You guys, do this. Go after the boar. And now we can start augmenting our uh, lumber economy here in a second. And then after that, you go up here. So yeah, hunting cabin economy looking good. Go grab this. They're dying already? What? Okay, we should probably build militaries if that's the case. Yeah, that's... um. That's that's definitely not not expected. We, we also have a passing uh, a crossing down to the south as well. Oh, I didn't like notice that. South corner. Holy shit! Thank you for pointing that out. It looks like they're walled there already. Cause I can't. It's like blocking my 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 building. Gotcha. Okay, let's do that. I think that's gonna be okay for now. 
Yeah, okay, man, I didn't notice that. Good good catch, dude. That could have been a disaster. Okay, you guys help finish the walls. Let's build a uh, gatehouse here. <laughs> they are far from dead, apparently. Are they just lying? Just just being dramatic? Hmm. Seems like it, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, just, just lies and treachery. All right. Let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm pushing green out of the river. Gonna try and hamper their food economy. They're, Melvin's actually still only age three, so. Okay. Um, and I'm like about to have imperial, like good quality stuff. Well, that's not bad. Uh, trade's 100, 119. Okay, that's a pretty good trade, actually. Yeah, I mean, pretty much about the best we could have hoped for on this. On this map, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, yes, let's do that. There's got to be more fishing down river. Looks like there is. So I need to be ready to switch to that farm economy, guys. We get biology here, and uh, did we get the sacred site? We did. Wow, there's actually a third relic here they didn't take. Okay, so I'm actually going to get three relics. So in this case, Tithe Barnes is worth it. These guys have just been... Oh, they actually got walled in. Hey, Felix, thank you for the 69-69. <laughs> I love it, dude. The blessed number strikes again. Thank you so much, Felix. I, I appreciate the number as well. It's great. Okay, so we got this. Being kind of lazy with my micro just to save my hands. And uh, get that set up and go here. All right, I pushed green out of the river. I don't know if it really matters too much, though. It's something. Yeah, we'll take it, man. Sitting at 114. Get the uh, upgraded double broad axe. Get more knights coming out. Now we need to go ahead and get archer ranges. Because Streltsy are very good. Streltsy and Roost Knights is a very powerful combo. Okay, let's do this. I only need five more stone. Give it to me. Come on. Alright. It's going to take like 10 years for that to build, but it's okay. It's like, why don't they go down river? There's plenty. There's plenty here. Hmm. Okay, let's do that and that. And then come down here. Thank you again, Felix. Really appreciate it, man. Okay, so they're not building the archer ranges. They should be, though. Okay. No, it's the tree. All's calm on the front with you, man. Yeah, I mean, just basically playing SimCity right now. It's kind of like pretty much, yeah. So yeah, I think I think the the idea of striking the French is going to be really good. So if I can break a breach into their um into their main base, can you uh like just do a ride by with your horses and just go cause havoc? Oh yeah. All right, sounds good. So that'll be kind of our, our loose game plan here. All right, just let me know whenever you're going to be ready to do that. You got it, man. It'll be it'll be a hot minute. Yeah, you're good. I'm just uh, gathering the Dread Legions right now. Hey, Felix and Warpug, thank you guys so much. All right, so how are we doing? Do we have the, the mass, Master Fishing yet? I got keeps guarding our trade. We got keeps coming up here. Um, what else do we have here? A big stone note? All right, let's go grab that. I don't like that. What the hell is that? Oh, Manganel, are you serious? Okay, let's go down river and just, just chill. It might be the time I need to switch to a land-based um, economy here. Take this bombard down river. See if it can help out. And, uh, yeah, start gra getting grabbing these nodes here. Time to get some uh, barracks as well. You need to be able to react to whatever they're doing with, like, crappy spearmen and basic units. We can't just rely on Streltsy because of gold. Upgrades. All right, so that that's that's pretty trolly. Don't know what we can do, so let's go down here. I think the bombard cannon's on its way. So the bottom's the bottom's picking a little bit of a fight with us. Okay. Nothing too crazy though. I think it's time to build some farms here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, because this this uh this is gonna work. Sure. Uh, they are far from dead. Okay. Seems like there's some conspiratorial talk going down here. So they're the uh, they're the island to our north. Okay. Uh, Melvin and Eight Man. Yeah, who knows what they're up to either. 
Got it, just a haggard cannon moving here. Let's get all the upgrades, make sure we're fully prepared for battle. My boats are just running from these two mangonels in the river. So my food economy is going to be pretty bad for now. Cannon's coming. I guess I could just make a couple of these into attack ships. That would probably solve the problem. So this is, this is a very, very like turtle style map. Yeah, for sure. Okay, more archer ranges. Okay, the attack ships are out. Now I should be able to just kill those things. And uh, let's get back to fishing here. Is it actually shooting? Oh shit, maybe we're gonna just have to give up the river economy. I don't know, which way do we go first, man? You need the car keys? You got them? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Like, yeah, the, the guys on the bottom are being very aggressive, so part of me thinks, like, taking them yeah. out, but then it gives the French in the north, like, yeah, we gotta go north, I think. All right, can you assemble your Dread Legion over here with me? Yep. Okay. So, um, I'm over by the gatehouse here. I think it's time to strike. The guys, they just have a couple mangoes. Yeah, my fishing is shut down, but it's whatever. It's not a huge deal. We do that. And then we do this. A little bit of this, just to be safe. And then you guys come over here. We gotta buy time. And buy time. Alright, how's the army looking for me, brother? Uh, got about... 50 uh, horsemen and knights. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm at the gates ready to push when you are. I got some battering rams. I'm gonna kinda push across this river here. Alright, it's coming up to you. Wonders are just gonna be so incredibly difficult to uh, to stop, right? So, Actually, I only have rams, so we need to get like some bombards. Let's gather everyone up, setting up walls and keeps at all the different frontiers. Looks good, and upgrades going okay. Alright. So we gotta push up. Here it comes. No more villagers. I think I have enough. Yeah, I'm at 118. That's that's definitely more than enough. Uh, let's get the uh, gunpowder. And at the siege workshops, we want to get the lightweight beams because it's very cost effective. All right. So let's move in. It's gonna take a hot minute to get this down. I don't have any. Uh, I do have some bombards coming in. Okay, let's wait for those. Is this going to be one of those like hellscape games where it takes like 10 years to... You must be banking a fair amount of gold though, yeah? Uh, well, not a lot right the second because I just went imp and I just bought a bunch of upgrades and uh, also getting a couple of trebuchets. Sounds good. I'm actually going to get the um, like basic upgrades for the warships. I feel like having some of those on the coastlines will make it hard to invade us. All right, get ready to go. I'm, I'm going to have the walls down pretty soon so you can move your army across the breach now. All right. All right, let's cross the river. They're, they're going to react pretty quickly, I would imagine. Okay. We got to do some brutal damage here. We can't let French just sit and bank resources. Oh, my cannons are blocking the, the way. Yeah, perfect. They're being hit 2v1. Now's the time to strike, dude. You ride and raid. I'll, I'll take on their armies. You just get in and go find vulnerabilities, yeah? All right. Okay, here comes the Red Army of 8-man. I think we have a better force. We'll have to see. Let's get these two mangoes up. Blast it. I can take this. You go raid their bases. Okay. Yeah, I, I can definitely steamroll this army. Yep, it's dead. It's traitors. All right. The dude, I, their army just got absolutely steamrolled. Oh, look at the trade. Oh, look yes. Trade. Okay, looking good. That was pretty nasty. Yeah, just do as much damage as you can. I don't think we lost anything there, dude. All right, so let's, search, let's try and take these guys down. Let's go like explore here a little bit with some knights, see what we can find. We got some keeps, GG for real this time. Okay, they were lying before, so they definitely deserve it. <laughs> That's what you guys get. Yes, yes. Send to the battering rams to go take down the keep. Get the bombard cannons on the keep as well. And you do this. 
Goodness. How are the knights going? Are they going to find any goodies? Yeah, you can't just let French players hit. Alright, so what other French players do we have in the game? Who would be going for, like, wonder spam? Okay, let's see. Um, okay, let's see this. Get that. This is the actual TC here. Okay, take down some villagers. Look at 8-man. Look at 8-man trying to trying to scheme his way out of this. Right. With the, the cowardly tactics. All right, let's keep moving up. We need to kill these guys quick before somebody else actually does backstab us because, you know, this is a, a point of vulnerability. Okay, let's ride up into the corner. Here's the School of Cavalry. There's a uh, white stupa. Yeah, it looks like our base is more or less safe for now. Holy shit. They just pulled all their bills to kill, like, one battering ram. Watch out for the red palace in the corner. Yeah, look at them, dude. They already have, like, 30 keeps in the corner. I knew they were doing some shit like that. I knew it. Okay. Dude, the... Oh, here comes Green's army. Is it any good, or...? Uh, just pull back, pull back a little bit and just keep Royal charging Knight. landmarks. They have like a hundred keeps in top corner for quick wonder. Yeah, we need to alert the rest of the world. Which hopefully the other players are fighting as well. Okay, gather up here. Looks like they're coming around the flank, the horsemen. Alright. I need to get siege engineering so I can build, uh, just start building ramps up here. Are these, what the hell are these horsemen? They're like potato age horsemen. Are you seeing this? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can get one, two. All right, so we definitely need to keep the pressure on these guys. So prepare for round two. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna spam rams, dude. The rams are pretty cost effective. Okay. I'm setting up a secondary layer of walls in our empire. All right, so we got pushed back there, but like we did pretty brutal damage. Pretty nasty damage, my friend. Okay, 13 villagers. Uh, let's get you guys down here and you guys down here as well. All right, that'll be some proper infrastructure. Do that. Gather up the Dread Legion. We march at dawn. The fact that they already have like in it like eight keeps in the top corner means we have to just keep going. Oh yeah, without a doubt. That doesn't matter. You are entrenched top. Yeah, we they, they it's the most obvious wonder telegraph like just straight up on the planet here, dude. Yeah, look at them. They're they're getting they're getting the fighting spirit now. So this is good. Um, what other teams do we have? So we have Melvin with a wonder, um, and it looks like the team on the bottom. Man, the team on the bottom is French also, which means they could be they could be doing something too. It's, it's quite stressful. Yeah, looks like the walls have been knocked down. I feel like we're gonna get wondered on the bottom, hundred percent. Oh, they'll have to be our next stop. Yeah, assuming... I mean, if they build a wonder as these guys die, we're going to be in a little bit of danger. That would be that would be a pretty MLG play. Okay, armies are gathering. You got some trebuchets. <laughs> One of the saddest FFAs I've ever played is what he says. <laughs> Just suffering. We do have the sacred side on the other side. Um, I mean, a sacred victory would be really hard to do. Holding one sacred point on each of these islands is just like, just like a hellscape, basically. Yeah, let's finish this one. You ready to push again? You got some troops? We got yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm good. All right, bring forth the knights. We don't have eco to make wonder. Hello, guys. Yeah, right. What the hell are these? There's like, there's just this random HRE army over here. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm definitely concerned about a wonder on the bottom. How are you doing on resources, by the way? Uh, got about 2,000 of everything right this second, but that just that's after just creating my army and getting a bunch of upgrades. Okay, the ram sign is back. We have we have 14 battering rams here. Uh, What's up, man? The flank? Purple's purple's armies here now. I wonder what they're doing, huh? Are you gonna attack us? There's a keep to the south if you want to pull back. Yeah. I wonder what their intentions are. I don't know, but I'm about to deal with it. I don't know. If, uh, I'll come from the north. I don't know if like. Uh, I don't know if we can beat them though, because a lot of my army's rams. Oh, mine's not. I'm flanking him though. Oh, hello. Okay, that's not gonna go well. They got a lot of mangonels entrenched in the woods, so we can't fight there. This is an interesting position. Yeah, we definitely need to start posturing for wonder. So start saving up what stone and resources you can. Yeah, this is definitely a losing fight. We can't get to their artillery. I just have rams moving in and having some having some fun over here. Okay, so let's get you guys to move over here. And then knights and spearmen, it's fine. He says doesn't have food to make villagers. Like he said they were dead earlier and then they weren't, so I like I don't trust them anymore. Yeah, I certainly don't. So we gotta start saving for uh, for a wonder, hundred percent. That works for me. I don't know why I just built that scout, but it's okay. Yeah, so we could probably steamroll that army with our second wave of attacks. Uh make some more Streltsy. I got Rams just kind of cleaning things out in the base on the top. There, there might be a grain of truth to the fact that they can't afford a wonder. Okay, I wonder why these guys are attacking here. It's very interesting. Yeah, we have to we have to respect the French the possibility of a French wonder on the bottom here. Yeah, I mean if these guys are, I don't know if they're attacking the um, purple. Are you guys attacking top? We have to like make them think like the wonder threat is more serious than it is. Although they're probably listening to the stream, so <laughs> <laughs> they probably know. That's, that's yeah. one way to look at it. Okay, treat yourselves. We will go from other side. All right. How how are we looking in terms of uh in terms of stone right now or resources? Uh, I will probably have enough to wonder in about three minutes. Okay. So I'm going to keep attacking these guys and we need to like do as much damage to these guys as we can. Yeah, there we go. Are those who greens villagers are just charging me here? What are they doing? Melvin says this is fun. Well, somebody's got to suffer. Not going to be us. <laughs> Not going to be us. Suffer. Okay, looks good. How do they know we're talking about wonders, huh? Hmm. Oh, I'm sure he's just. I'm sure he's just has good game yeah. sense. Okay, so I'm gonna. No, that just, it just makes sense. I'm gonna entrench bottom here a little bit. I can't build too many walls. I'm building. I'm gonna work on building a bunch of towers in that corner. Yeah, I need to just sell some. Sell some of this. Can you? Are you able to? How much stone do you have saved up at the moment? Uh, about two k. You want it? Uh, I mean, I'm good. No, you, you you should probably build the wonder. No, I don't need it for. Oh wonder. yeah, then just toss it my way. But we <laughs> we got to be as quick as possible on this because the time is running short. All right. Um, the dreaded banded beams. I love it. They have like they do have like a lot of keeps up here. There's a chance they might have enough resources. Okay. Okay, so the siege continues. I uh, don't need an attack ship here, that's for damn sure. I'm trying to knock down keeps where I can. Okay, the armies are sallying forth to attack me. Okay. Pretty low quality uh, armies. Uh, I could probably. No, 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 never mind. They actually have good armies. Says broke. Has army of handgunners. Yeah, we gotta we gotta like return the politics on him a little bit. 
Okay, so let's make some knights, make some streltsy, make some spears to buffer out. Okay, let's keep it going. One keep down. Let's see if we can get another one. I can get a couple of these keeps down. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, well, let's attack this army. Why the hell not? Let's see if we can get another keep down here. Uh, could make bombards, but I'm just going to have too much trouble defending them, I think. They're still building keeps. Yeah, they could they could do a wonder. I'm not sure. Hmm. All right, let's see here. They're, they're still just desperately clawing for... Yeah. I, they're, I, I would wager they have more than they're letting on. I mean... I think they have enough to build a wonder. <laughs> I legit think they have enough to build a wonder. The way they're playing and like the quality of their armies. The guild hall, they must have enough stone. Um, so I I can actually build the wonder too. How many bills do you have? I currently have 113. Okay, or so a little bit, yeah, a little bit. I have a little bit more. Um, let's and if look. you want to go wonder, I'll feed you another 1,600 stone. Yeah, we could do something that. with that. Yeah, I'm just so low on food is my problem. I have like a terrible food eco. I've only got like 2,500, but I mean, I could buy a good deal. No, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I'll keep pressuring in the meantime. Like loosely pressuring. I'm not going to go like too hard in the paint. Okay, so we do have like keeps and you're setting up the rat's nest of Mongol towers, which we love. I have hunting cabins all over the island, generating, wow, 68 gold a minute from that hunting cabin. That's huge. That's basically a relic, guys. That's basically a relic. Okay, we have way too much on, on wood right now. Yeah, we need to we need to augment that a little bit. Taking what we can. Let's go see if anybody else is attacking here. So, I, I like wonder, genuinely wonder what the guys on the south are up to. You know? Evan yeah. Yeah, they've okay. been way too quiet. Oh, Wonder, wonder Bot. Uh, we know okay. what to do. We know what to do. All right. Let's head down there. They, yeah, because I, I don't think they've been fighting anybody. I don't think so either. All right, let's take the armies, head down here. Uh, we need to go ahead and build some siege workshops here and start knocking down these walls. All right, so if we could just stop these guys on the bottom, then we're chilling. Easier said than done, of course, but sounds good. This will allow the guys up top. I'm going to delete these. Just increase the uh, speed of the army. Okay, so we'll try and take these guys down. So let's go ahead and start making this and this. And these guys can build our forward supply lines. All right, boys. Let's move it and groove it. Just some random ass Mongol horsemen chasing me. Um, we could take the sacred site, but not really too much to be gained from that. So let's just go get the uh, shoreline fishing here. All right, so yeah, I'll clear away on this bottom path where your uh, your army is right now. All right, we'll go for it. This is gonna cost a lot, but I do have a lot of stone banks. So if we do ever decide to, um, yeah, they've had a lot of time to prepare, and they are playing HRE. So nobody's nobody's been uh, trading with them, or excuse me, uh, attacking them. But we might be able to get the war machine going. We'll see. It depends on how effective the other team is at attacking. Okay, let's go down here, guys. Do this. Pop that. And cut some of you guys to get a bigger military supply. Perfect. All right. So it begins. Yes, we will see. Um, What do we got here? So trebuchets. Ah, that's pretty good. Yeah, we might actually end up needing trebs. All right, you have your uh, your legion nearby? You do. The Mongol horde is here. The golden horde has arrived. Yep. The rest of my army is kind of coming from the north. I suppose I could have uh, remade them, but... All right. Uh, yeah, they've got a lot of walls here. We should be able to get through them somewhat quick. So I'll just keep knocking my way through these walls, yeah? Yep. Okay. Let's do this. Set up a little uh, keep here. Looks like they have some defenders. Sallying forth. Uh, some knights are coming, so if you could block those. That would be great. 
Yeah, I mean, these walls are decent, but we should be able to get through them. I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. Okay. Cannon's back. Can these guys move through the gates, please? What's going on with that army there, dude? You see it? Yeah. Oh, the keep got the keep got screwed. Yeah, it's too bad. All right, you guys, you stay here. Yep, just keep knocking down walls and creating a direct path through, and we should be fine. Okay, so let's just keep moving and a grooving. Uh huh, and uh huh. It looks like there might even be a way around. If you want to take your army around and go look for vulnerabilities, I can push through here. Okay. Yeah, go see what you can find. All right, lads, the push is on. Let's set this up. We must be the only ones attacking right now. I feel like, uh, well, maybe, maybe that's not true. We'll have to see. Okay, let's pull back. Get this going here. Pull you guys down here. And attack. All right, cannons, knock down the walls. Almost there. Yep. There are my trips. It's okay. I still got my cannons. I'm making good progress through their entrenchments. Okay, let's do this. Pull you guys in. You guys attack. Still have all four cannons. Keep us up. Let's get the emplacement. Start setting up towers over here. Oh, wow. See if you can just ride straight to their wonder, dude. Go scout that out so we have some intel. Nice. Right, so you're killing the uh, the Regnets? Mm hmm. Very good. Okay. Okay, so they're they're just meeting me head on in these choke points, which I think is favoring us. Oh, that that this position isn't good. All right. Oh wow, he put Regnet's mine work and uh, and his main TC all together. It won't eliminate him though, unless it's his last because he's got an ally. Right. Yeah. I'm making good progress through these walls though. I don't know if I even really needed to, but okay, I think we killed my people that were riding straight for the. Yeah. Did you see what the? Okay, they have like a layer of walls. Ally destroyed a landmark. Okay, very good. Making our way through. Now we need to go ahead and set up some towers in here so our opponents can't rebuild. Okay, horses coming in the front. Spears should be able to defend these cannons. So we keep knocking, knocking on Heaven's door here. And set up towers and towers and towers. Looks like the cannons took a little bit of damage, but nothing serious. Oh no, these are for ramps now. That's right, we can do the dreaded ramp sign. All right, let's go, boys. Keep pushing. I'm uh, I'm gonna try to uh, pop cap him. Sounds good, brother. Yeah, and if the other team is helping, then you know we might be in okay shape. It's a little bit hard to say. I'm in the main base now. I've I've successfully breached. Cannons, they're struggling to get them. Come up on the walls. They're just kind of spamming waves of horsemen, which is a good idea, but um, yeah, we should be okay. Keep knocking these down, and a horseman come in here. We got 25 of you guys. Any wood left on the island? Yes. The Streltsy up there. Pretty fun. Okay, let's get this so they can't rebuild their walls. That's why we set up these little towers, so if they try and rebuild the stone walls, we head them off. Oh man, you're causing a lot of havoc in their base. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is is there anyone else attacking? Uh, not that I've seen. I bet you the top is just gonna build a wonder too, and we're just gonna be in a haggard wonder rat race the whole time. Hey, low level Saiyan, thank you. I mean, we might be able to landmark snipe these guys if they didn't actually hide a landmark. That could be that could be dangerous stuff for them. Yeah, I'm in the base now. Okay. See this? Get a couple of you guys pulling back, and um, yeah, still quite a bit. I see the guild hall down there. I really, we really need the other team to attack here. Like it's gonna be close with just us. Okay, reinforcements are coming in. Cannons knocking down towers. You're torching everything. Yeah, yeah. The Mongols de definitely getting some big damage in there. Also getting plenty of uh, bounty off of it too. 
I don't see you guys helping. They're asking how we're doing. Yeah. So maybe we just let them win. Yeah, we have to, we have to, you know, add a little bit of spice. One million towers. Yeah, they certainly have a, quite a few towers. I think they're starting to run out of eco. Now they're still making horsemen. They're still making horsemen. We got seven minutes left. We're getting pretty close. Can build like 50 battering rams too when the time comes. Let's have you guys go down here. I'm just like basically farming their horsemen out. Okay, so let's knock all these down. Yes. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully our allies are helping here. I'm not sure. I mean, you've done pretty lethal damage to them and you're torching a lot of their buildings. What's your uh, army supply at right now? Uh, pop capped at 200. Okay. I've got the second wave of them about to come in. Sounds good, my dude. Okay. Yeah, we're pushing, but we're going to need some rams. So, going rams. Make some horsemen, make some men-at-arms. They're actually, they actually are doing an okay job holding here. We're going to have, like, it's going to be a tight push. Okay, let's move up. I think there's another mango here. Let's pop that thing. My supply lines aren't amazing. Yeah, I wonder if the other guys are helping. It's going to be pretty close. Uh, we don't want rams. We want uh, bombards. It's good. Holy shit. Yeah, these guys have got a... Hey, can you get your knights in and support my uh, my troops in the middle? Yeah. I still have a bastion of Streltsy, but... Yeah, they are just pouring out a lot of units. I, I legit think the other side isn't doing anything. Could be wrong. There's no way they would be able to fight on two fronts. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna keep building rams in the meantime. Okay. And uh, that'll that'll slowly kind of knock down infrastructure. You just finish their armies off if you can. Okay, reinforcements should be on the way. Supply lines are really long. I didn't want to have to pull a bunch of bills, but I guess we should. All right, so let's get you guys down here. And you guys, let's do this. Get you guys down here. Should have done that sooner. A little bit of a newbie mistake. It looks pretty vulnerable on on this one side, at least. Yeah, I mean, we can get to it, unless they've got a ton of keeps in there that I can't see. Yeah, I mean, like, 50 battering rams will probably be able to push through that. Five minutes, though, is very, very tight. Okay, they're, they're not making armies really anymore. It seems like they might have run out of steam finally. I think I may have pop capped the shit out yeah, of Yeah, keep them. doing it. Keep doing it. At least uh, pink. Can you take a, a group of horsemen and go, like, move up and see what the entrenchments look like? Yeah. Okay. I hear cannon towers. Oh, here's some troops back here. Do we got enemy troops doing anything? Or, uh, like, no, our, no. our allies? Or no? We still don't see them? No. I hear cannon towers on the back side. Here's somebody's main TC. Okay, I'm going to go knock these walls down behind that TC. I'm, I'm sending all the ramps to go do it. Okay, so let's just knock these towers down. Get all these. Looks good. There's only like veteran archers. Yeah. <laughs> we only have four minutes left. This is going to be pretty tight. Rams are going for it. I'm sending some Ramsteins back here. Tell you what, you get the. You make a hole, and I will get in what I can. I would wager they have multiple layers of defenses, though. We'll find out. Yeah, I would I would I would guess they would be on top of that. Okay. Let's get some siege workshops here at the very least. That's that's what we need. Okay, we got a breach. Can you go scout and see what it looks like to the yep. next? Okay, it looks like they have more stuff back here. I don't know if we're gonna get this. Three minutes is really, really tight. It's gonna keep rolling up. I was gonna say, I don't know that they have another wall. Oh, so you're saying we can just get straight through? Uh, I haven't seen another wall yet. That's that's a lot of towers, though. I'm sending just Ramsteins back there in droves. Okay, the Rams are moving. I have 13 of them. Let's go over here. 
Start making trebuchets. Those rams are actually kind of made some distance, but yeah, no, I, I think the other side isn't doing much. Oh, I don't think they're doing anything. Yeah, they're, I don't think they're helping at all. We could try and landmark snipe, but I don't know. I don't know, I'd have to really do quick inventory and I don't know if we have time for that. Here's the red palace, by the way. We need to knock this thing down quick. Okay, we're pretty close to it. Yeah, the wonder's right here, the great palace. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, pull the armies away from your rams. How many landmarks did you kill, by the way? Uh, at least three or four for each. Okay, I'm, I'm actually making it to the... You're making it to the wonder? Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm not able to, like, do any damage to it. Yeah, this is very entrenched. I'm just going to start ramming through a little bit to try and create some space. Um, we have you guys. Let's do just, just build this. Making some progress, but yeah, without the other team, these guys have just been entrenching the entire game. I guess this map truly is just a race to just go wonder. Yeah, like, aggression just seems stupid. You might as well just turtle and, and uh, build a wonder, you know? We got a minute 46. Unless the other team has some miracle plays, I don't see us getting in here. Yeah. The Rams could still do it? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. We only have a minute. The Rams got in and, you know, we've made progress, but... Yeah, I guess maybe, like, a legion of these. We'll have, like, one last go at it. And I don't know if the top is able to contribute much after the beating they took earlier. Um, what other landmarks do we have left? Yeah, they have the L's back down there. That could be their last landmark. Although, no, they have a guild hall right here, so. Okay, let's gather up, team. Get you guys down here. We got Trebs. Delete some of you guys. Delete some of you guys for now. We don't need wood anymore. All right, we got yeah, 50, I mean, 57. Okay. Let's just move in together and try, yep. and try and close in on it now. Unfortunately, my siege equipment's really slow. I don't think it's going to make it in time. Oh, is the other side close? They have, they've got villagers pulled to repair. Yeah, GG, though. They, they played the map well. They, they did what you're supposed to do on this map. You said... Yeah, I can't even get to it. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah, I got Trebs closing in, four of them, which might be able to put some damage on. Yeah, just charge it. Just charge it. Last Samurai, that shit. I might be able to get some Artie in range. It's going to be close. Ooh, 19 seconds, man. We're actually getting some distance here. They do have emergency repairs. Okay, you got this round on it? Oh, we might get this, actually. It's going to be kind of close. Holy shit. Another couple seconds, and we get it. I think they just barely finish it, yeah. though. Because, yeah. No, dude, guys. Another, like, five seconds, and it's dead. Oh, my God. Look yeah. at that. Oh. No. Almost. <sighs> GG, dog. It was a nice try. It was, it was a nice try. Yeah, we got there. Oh, well, there it goes. Oh, look at that. The Trebs are so close. Go for a conquest victory. Uh, hey, don't stress it, man. It was, a, it was a good try. It was a good try. Oh, yeah, no. The other, the, well, that's, that's the thing on this map. It's kind of like, it's very hard to attack because of the natural choke points. So you have to, yeah, the top, the top was just trying to re-secure. I don't think they were helping. Although yeah. it looks like they were attacking from the top, actually. Oh, dude, look how close they were. Oh, my God. Look at that. They had uh, four or five great bombards there. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. They were so close. That was like down to a couple seconds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. That was a great game. That was a great game. No, they were helping. They were helping, guys. Yeah, they did. We almost got it solo. But I think solo we wouldn't have been able to get it. Because um, clearly they were putting pressure on at the top. But it just wasn't yeah, quick they, enough. Yeah, it was, great, a, it, was, it was a good hold. The great bombards just got there. Well, and they have L's back too, which is really good because L's back gives 30% um, reduced damage to Wonders too. So you just park that next to your Wonder and it reduces the damage. Yeah. Yeah, and then the keep right there had a uh, had a relic in it. Yeah, it was a good attempt. Yeah. But yeah, the, I think meta on this map is just Wonder Rush. Even if they're, everyone's still alive. Because like how is... If you look, for example, on this map, you have the... Um, the, the team on the top, right? How is that team mm -hmm. on top going to do anything towards the bottom without doing a naval landing in the middle? Like, so oh, yeah, yeah, the you're pretty much only having to deal with two teams, which in a 2v4 situation with choke points is very viable. So I think, um, I think just sitting, not attacking anybody, like if we had just not spent our resources trying, well, to, trying I, to kill the north, you know? Yeah, it's just a wonder yeah, rush. I mean, looking at it, you know, 
us and the team on the east, I think we were all attacking the team in the north, and just nobody was putting any pressure on the south. Yeah, well, we had to attack the north though, because look at them. Like if you look oh, at yeah. if you look at the northern base, they were probably really close to a wonder, and they there we would have had zero chance of getting this, like zero chance. Because look at this, they have they already have ten keeps here, red palace. Like there would be absolutely no chance in hell we get that. That would be that would be yeah. nuts. Yeah. All right, guys. So you're gonna get those grand finals set up, brother, and I will uh, I'll cast them. GGs as yep. always. It was a good it was a good GGs, attempt. Brother. It was a good attempt. Man. Yeah. I mean, we, we were we had some solid play on our part. We just, you know, yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't, didn't pull, quite get there. Didn't quite get there. Yeah. No, if we had gotten that, I think we're in good position to win because then we just build wonder. But it was it was literally the difference of like three seconds. Yeah. Landmark yeah, sniping might have done it. Maybe. Yeah. It was hard. Because I had you know eleven thousand stone, twenty five thousand gold, twelve thousand wood, and like three thousand food just already just ready to go. Yeah, I do like this map though. It's fun. It's like it's the wonder race thing is pretty good. Eight man says he wasn't even close to a wonder. I mean, it looks like you guys might have been. Because, yeah, like you have 6,000 stone in Guild Hall with all these keeps. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely scary. But, yep, it was a good good run. We'll, be, we'll get him next time, brother. No stress. That's right. I'm not worried about it. All right, man. We'll get him. Well, you can, uh, right, let me know. Shoot me a message when you uh, the pods are ready, and I can play some 1v1s in the meantime if they're still going. So, sounds good. All right. GG's, brother. All right. GG, brother. All right, guys, we tried. We were a couple seconds too late. That's how the cookie crumbles. We tried our best. And now we will uh, we'll see how we're doing in the um, in the pods. So, Gunhound, if you're still in chat, do let me know how we're looking on the pods. And if we have one going, I'll, I'll just play some 1v1s or something in the meantime. Yeah, English Holy Roman seems like it would be, like, unstoppable. Like, Barkshire Palace, Ellsback. Just with like a corner wonder. Yeah, like I don't know how you would beat that. It seems like, I mean, you could eventually, but yeah, that map was also like, I remember playing that map in the beta and having pretty good success with wonders, even in 1v1. There was like a couple games. GG, that wonder really helped us out. Uh, I tried so hard. I'm not the best. Oh, you did great. Yeah, no, you guys, you guys, like French players always go for wonder. So if you don't attack them early in a map like that, then yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna pay the troll toll. All right, so let me check with Gunhound and see how we're looking here. Uh, let me know. I'm in chat. We're finding out now. Sounds good. Shout out to Gunhound. We'll see what he's got. And uh, yeah, we can queue up, play some ranked. Haven't played Age in like a in, a in a good week. It's good to be back. I definitely like the Roost on that map, though. They felt pretty good. We were getting tons of gold from all those um, hunting cabins and, and the uh, high trade house and whatnot. Yeah, probably probably the equivalent of like a decent Regnance, actually. With three relics too. Pod three just ended. Um, so we should have four pods in total. So our pod is done. That pod is done. And if there's still a couple of pods going, I can just play and then jump in and cast when the uh, when the time comes. Yeah, yeah, Melvin, you definitely seemed like you had a good time blowing up my docks with your uh, demo ships. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, you, I, I was gonna come and try and sweep you out of the water, but you did a good job defending yourself there. It was very good, man. You played well. Hey, thank you guys again for joining. Fun times as always. Five minutes to wonder in our pod. Five minutes to wonder. Oh, so you guys are in a pod with a wonder. I feel like every single pod is going to be won by a wonder on that map. I don't think there will be any domination or sacred victories. It's it's just going to be wonder games. We could play a we could play a one v one in the meantime. I'm down to party, dude. Let's. Are you guys down to party? I'm down to party. So five minutes for that one, but the wonder could be destroyed. Um, I have to climb back. I place really low, but we should be able to climb back. It shouldn't be too hard. Like, even though it put me in a lower league, I'm still playing. It still puts me against Diamond and Conqueror players. I don't know. I guess you have your own ELO outside of how you place. Which actually makes it harder to climb back up. Yeah. We'll queue up for now. That was a great Wonder game. Love, Dude, that was really down to the wire. That was really down to the wire, that game. that Their Wonder was literally like a couple seconds. If I had deleted my villagers earlier... And built some more, like that's all it takes is like one more efficient play. Yeah, Jesse, you and Hunter won with a uh, wonder as well. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Warhammer 3 faction? Empire all day, man. Yeah, I'm an Empire main. I also play Empire and Tabletop too. So that's um that's that's my favorite faction if we're talking Total War. Can we bet if any team makes it to the finals without French or Mongols on the team? Uh I don't think Mongols are like French are the smart a really smart choice on that map. Like really, really smart. Yeah, being able to rush stone on a map that has natural choke points is very good. 
Very good. French are, you know, on a big open maps, like they're good still, but it's not as easy to like Helm's Deep in. Mon Mongols are better at wonder turtling on open maps because they don't need as much, like they could just spam the towers with cannons and just have Springalds and Mangonels hiding like inside the towers. Why am I wearing headphones? I hate wearing headphones. I have, um, I have like really big Dumbo ears. I don't know if you guys, I haven't used a face cam in like a couple years, but I inherited very large Dumbo style ears. So when I wear headphones, they always start to hurt like really quick. It's just like, it just presses on you and it's just like, ugh, it's nasty, nasty. Yes, I could fly with them. When I was a kid, it looked really ridiculous. It was like, it was just, they were just massive. Flots on a 4v4 tournament? I'd be down. Yeah, 4v4, like, but like the thing is, FFA gives a chance to the underdog, right? Like if we have... There's a lot of players who regularly win our FFA tournaments who are not Conqueror level players, like in terms of 1v1 and just like general like macro and micro and stuff, right? But with good decision making and the unique nuances of FFA and the politics are able to beat higher level, like players who might beat them in a, who would be better in a 1v1, right? So that's why I love FFA. Like if we just host 4v4 tournaments, you're just going to get, you're just going to get people like, you know, Zlami and these guys showing up and just karate chopping with like their three Conqueror buddies. It's, it's, um, but in FFA, it's a little bit harder because there's, there's kind of like checks and balances. Like if there's some really strong team, like the rest of the teams will keep them in check. I think that's kind of like the magic of that format for sure. Okay, let's check here. All right, looking solid, man, looking solid. Dude, yes, Gunhound man. He's ke he, keeps the, he keeps it going, man. He keeps the ball rolling. I'm all over the place with trying to host all these different games and Gunhound just... He's the, he's the anchor that keeps the Age of Empires going here. So uh, thank you again, Gunhound. You should try deep, deeper ear pads. That's what I had to do. You know what I did? Um, I just wear like little Apple earbuds, and they don't bother me as much. Yeah. Oh, Silver Ancient Spires. This is a this is a map here. Why do I why do I recognize this name, Samurai Style? It sounds like it sounds like something I recognize here. All right. Do we want to play Roost? Do we want to play HRE? Um, I don't really know. What do we play nowadays? Do we do we go Kremlin or something? Let's go. Let's go with a little bit of ruse. Should be fun. But yeah, the water fishing, we're going to have to set that up right away, which is going to take away from our hunting cabin action. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't like this map. I don't like this map. I thought I had vetoed it, but I guess not. I would be down to put together a team. Uh, yeah, sounds good. We can totally do that, man. We can totally do that. All right, so ruse first Chinese. Like, why do I always feel like that's... I already feel like that's like a scary situation. Uh, I do play with audio. I have my speakers on, so I can hear. Yeah. No, I, I I wear my little Apple headphones. It's probably the the closest I closest I could do. All right. So how are we doing here? So yep. Let's just do this. Do this. Bounce around, and we can grab that and set you up. I feel like my scout's like moving in slow motion here. Okay. Let's go see what we can find. Um, I, I like. I wonder. I only see one shoreline fishing node there, so I don't know if it's like worth the full the full business. Yeah. Let's go find some deer camps, and uh, you definitely want to go hunting cabin first. I feel I don't really know. Like I'm, I'm really out of the loop of the meta. I, I know in the last um, EGC TV thing they had, they they had like some crazy rules, like where there was no stone allowed, like in the entire phase of the tournament. Which is, did anybody watch that? Was it fun? Was it like better? Was it worse? I'd be curious to hear your guys' opinions on that. Anyways, um, we'll get our second dude here. Um, there's like literally a couple fishing nodes here. Um, and it looks like we have one down there as well. Okay, so usually like four on lumber is going to be okay. We have a wolf here. Let's get this. See if we can find a little bit of that. And cool. So we could go fishing. It will give us a decent eco. Um, I don't think there's any deep water fish or anything. So this guy can go top. I think the, the, the game is either in the corner. Yeah, I'm not sure where it lurks. Like, China can go for the shoreline fishing a little bit easier because they can just set up a mill. But for me, I have to do, like, the hunting cabin, which seems a little bit a little bit weird. Well, anyways, let's uh, let's go. See. Can we find some deer? I mean, I'm seeing wolves. I'm having to take the Walmart bounty. Um, So we got two, three there. So, like, building, like, that doesn't feel worth it. It will give us a decent little, like, power spike. Okay, let's go see if they're in the corner of the map because we should. you should always have two deer near your base. Unless this map has like a unique circumstance where that's not the style. I don't like put yeah, with Roos I actually like to go two TC more than I like to do aggression. Granted, aggression seems seems very uh very strong. 
Oh my god, where are the deer camp? Okay, I was gonna say, geez, if we if we couldn't find these, I was gonna be super bummed. And there must be another one down here, anyways. We're getting a lot of wolves, which is nice. Okay, so we haven't we don't have enough like guaranteed yet to do the um, wheelbarrow. And I think that it might be worth doing some water here. It might be worth it. So let's go down here and play water in this pond. It seems like I see at least a couple fishing nodes. Um, to make it worth it. So this is going to slow down our age up, but it will give us a lot of um, lot of agency in terms of, uh, you know, everything else. So, see the boar camp. Do this. And we'll take the sheep back to the base. This guy's battling the dread wolf, and we have found the other deer camp. So that, in conjunction with the wolves, means we probably can go early wheelbarrow, because we're going to have enough now. Which is awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty feels pretty good. Alright, uh, let's set you up here. Hopefully China doesn't scout it. And uh, now we can do this. Bring you back and do that. Have you guys go jump on wood here. Gonna set this up. We'll get like a couple boats. And since Rus have a really good wood economy, it's probably worth. All right, outstanding. Yeah, see now we get the early wheelbarrow, which is really nice. Okay, let's go see what he's doing. Let's go see if he's playing any water. And uh, I think there was another sheep down here. We'll take this to the base. And we got the early wheelbarrow coming. Able to drop off the sheep before he ran out of food, so things are going somewhat smoothly so far, I would say. No stone. Okay. So I see some of the things about it. It was a constant tug of war with a lot of fe like thirty minute feudal games. Yeah, wouldn't be my favorite. I, I prefer Castle Age. Feudal is um, it's not as interesting to me. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a big feudal enjoyer, to be completely honest. Uh, we need to get some wood here in a second. All right. So yeah, 240 bounty. If we can get like a little bit more, that'll be pretty sweet. Set up a house here. And yeah, we got enough sheep for now. We're gonna be getting uh, some fishing, which is awesome. And let's see what we can find in the shadows. Maybe he missed a deer camp. I see the boar. So it's always good to get a, like one or two roost knights really early just to get the boar down. Um, Chinese aren't gonna be aggressive. So going for Golden Gate is just the way. Yeah, in my opinion. Okay. So he aged up faster than us. That, that's probably because he's not doing any sort of water action, so. Probably gonna be two TC. Like Chinese are rarely aggressive, in my in my opinion. Um, you don't see them getting too crazy too often. Okay, look at that. We got a deer. I'll take it. Give me the scraps. Give me that free gold, baby. He probably just went one scout and hasn't you know gotten there yet. That's like just the, the basics of that. Okay, so yeah, we have the water going, which we should be able to kind of get more. It's like we found the other deer. Wow, he he must just not have found the deer camps yet. So that's pretty big. For Roos, it's just like, it's so much extra gold. It's like just, you know, a couple free upgrades, which is awesome. So do we want to go 2TC or fast? I actually like the idea of fast castle on this map, so I think we're just going to go fast castle. 2TC um, Roos is very good with Golden Gate, but I uh, I think fast castle will be a little bit little bit safer. And the fact that we have fishing, maybe we'll um, complement that. Okay, because he's for sure going to be going multi-TC. Yeah, we can get like three or four votes in here. I, don't, I think more than that isn't worth. Oh my god, can we get a wood turn in? For the love of god. All right. So now you guys can come over here. Let's set you up and start on this. So we see here, all right, he's up to something. And uh, let's go ahead and get that. Can we get a wood turn in? Oh my God, please, please. There we go, okay. They always, they, it, right when you need it is when, when they forsake you. I'll keep you here, let's go here, let's see what he's doing. Looking good and pull a couple of you guys in and we need to get a, uh, where's the nearest boar? It's actually kind of far away from the base. So doing a villager pull for the boar, Wow, uh, a coastal barbican with like two bills or something. How many bills is he building that with? Three, okay. Um, let's get one more fishing boat here. Okay, so he's building a proxy, not a proxy, but like a forward barbecue. And uh, we can grab some of you guys, do this, and come over here. Hit that deer encampment with the hunting cabin. We'll keep you back here to scout. And uh, okay, so he's going song. So yeah, I need to get a big castle age advantage basically um, in order to win this. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. China, China's really, I, I often wonder what's worth it. Like the 2TC or the um, or the Fast Castle Roost. Fast Castle Roost can get a lot of relics. So let's like lure him around here if we can. And uh, now we need to get a little bit more bouncy on the table. All right, so looks good. We have this. We can trade resources as needed. Let's get one stable and just get one night out um, for a little bit of map control. Should be fun. And uh, he's coming this way. So let's get our scout and attack here. Pull him in, get a little 2v1 there, and uh, life's good. Life is good. Sell some food for gold. Attack here. We'll get one knight, and the knight can come down here. If he doesn't wall this side, we can definitely cackle a little bit. 
Yeah, he's going to be going multi-TC, so his castle age should be a little bit behind ours. Uh, we can get the food upgrade, and that'll be it. All right, so now we're chilling. We have the boats. We don't want more boats in this, because there's not that much um, food in there, so it's going to be... Let's go see where he's going with his other TC. All right, so we need to get the boar up on the top side. So that's what we'll be trying to do. Castle age should be coming pretty quickly here. And uh, we're still on wood, obviously. And it's, it's, it, what you do with the wood is you just sell it at the high trade house and it gives you what you're looking for. Okay, village coming up. And uh, let's go here and start taking a little bit of map control with Roost on Palisades, which is, is pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good with how quick you can build it. I'm just glad I'm not being barbecue rushed. Hey, sounds good. Gunhound, I'm glad to hear it, man. Glad you were streaming. Okay. Uh, do we want fishing upgrades? Not worth. Definitely not worth. Oh, he's got horsemen and stuff. Look at that. Okay, maybe let's build a second Roost Knight, huh? Okay, so the Knight's on the way, so let's just run. I wonder if he's going to, like, actually raid us or something? That would be... Yeah, China 2TC, or 2TC, like, feudal aggression can be pertinent, for sure. But we're going to have some Roost Knights here soon, and uh, hopefully they'll put a little bit of hurt on him. You know what? Let's make one more boat. I feel like that's good. All right, now we can attack with the, uh, the Knight here. Okay, it's fine. You can just do a thing. No problem. Um, all right. So let's start setting up uh, you. So do this and build it like this and turn and fight. And we can try and get us around here. All right. So let's get you guys and build this and get the Abbey of the Trinity. And we did get one of his horsemen caught. So now we just palisade the map and like try and lock him in. Oh my God. Did we, did we not get that guy? Okay, great. We did. All right. Let's go get the boar. Ah, no, we need to support this wall. Yeah, he's probably going to shut it down. Let's get this bounty. Take this Roost Knight over here to support him. And uh, the boar the boar will be there for us, you know, in time. But yeah, getting these like walls to uh, take control of the map is really, really quite good, actually. Let's go over here and do the same thing. I would imagine he's going to have some horsemen coming over. Okay, looking all right. Let's grab a couple of you guys. Switch here. Okay, looks like that wall is going to go down, so we can just go top now. And Abbey of the Trinity, we just need to get homeboys out pretty quick, do this, and uh, just start grabbing all the relics on the map. And that's like, that's how you make up for the 2TC um, difference, right? Okay, so this, then we can do a little bit of that. It is taking quite a bit of our wood, but we do have the age advantage, so let's hope for the best. Okay, let's take that pig down. More houses. And uh, did I de-hotkey this? I think I did. All right, buy that. And then let's go ahead and get this. Pig is down for the count. All right, let's loop around. We have this villager, so let's go ahead and do... So one of the changes the Roost got in um, in this patch is that... Okay, there's a second TC, actually. Okay, so let's do this, this, and this. And uh, get the knight upgrade, and we need to get the... We basically just need to get all the goodies on the map that are possible. And just get sacreds and uh, really force them into an awkward situation, right? Okay, let's get you. Roost Knights. Just get a Legion of the Knights. Let's go raid over here. We can actually do a little bit of raiding. I could go for the other Dread Pig. Looks like he's he's scouting there. Okay, let's grab you and bring it back here. And then you can go up here, grab this, and bring it back here. We got to get, like, all these relics, man. Otherwise, um... Okay, looks like the pathing's going down here. We're getting the walls. Let's get you, and uh, we can go ahead and wall this. Wall and wall. Oh man, okay, that's like a weird... There we go. Alright. So let's get you up on golds. Build some houses. Just get more Roost Knights coming out. And let's go in and cause a little bit of havoc in his base. Okay, looks like he didn't, he didn't quite see that, so... That's great. And we do get the Relic back. It looks like we're about to get one. Let's go in after the villagers here. And homeboy, um, these walls, you can go have him help. All right, great. So he actually aged up pretty quickly, considering he went Song 2 TC. But we are getting some nice little eco damage here. All right, so let's move into the base, continue raiding. Did we get that relic back? We did, so he's going to do this, and then he can go get this one. All right. Keep getting knights coming out. Looks like the walls are coming up. Let's get you. Oh, my God, the, the way that like this is working is very junky. Okay, Roost Knights. Let's get him in here. Now we can loop back this way. Just kind of keep trying to idle him and just put a lot of pressure on him, essentially. All right, so how are these guys doing? Okay, so we need to get you guys on another camp here. 
There we go. So he's got his own dudes. Um, we need to get a blacksmith up. He's got spearmen. Let's go back down this way. You guys finish the walls of doom. And yeah, keep making those guys. And uh, this one we should be able to wall just like so. Great. Drop this off. And build another religious building. Need to get another religious building here in a second. Yeah, we have our, our little contain on him, which is pretty funny. Okay, Roost Knights, let's have you jump in there. We're going to get another uh, religious building because we are going to need it to fit, fit all of our relics. And uh, let's get that. Have it come back here. And uh, look at that. Oh, we actually got a little bit of damage. Not too much. He does have Spearman mixed in now. So let's get uh, try and get a critical mass here. Upgrades. You guys uh, can now go to uh, this. And uh, can we go down here? Yes. And uh, why, why can we not wall there? He must have something there. Not sure. But hopefully the wall control is doing something. So a little bit of this. All right, let's move into the lumber line again. Make some knights. And uh, we need to switch into archer tech. That's going to be the play. Okay. Just one palace guard. Let's karate chop that guy. And you go over here. Kill the, uh, the character here if we can. Nice. And now we need to build some archery ranges. Boyar's Fortitude is really good. Chef Boy RD. Ah, looks like he set up his own little uh, ramparts down here. All right. And we can turn and fight these guys if they don't have spear support. Okay, let's just keep looping around. Keep the knights coming. The spearmen, the China, the spearmen, they got some wheels, dude. They they are not slow. Ah, oh, okay. So he does actually have some guys here that are raiding my lands. Let's come down here and see if we can salvage it. These villagers can attack. Yeah, unfortunately, they got caught in an attack move there. Okay, so these vills, not wanting to fight this. Let's pull you back, and uh, you guys can just set up a little bit of an emergency tower there. Let's grab the sacred site in the meantime. Archers, and uh, let's get another archer range coming up. All right, so these guys should be coming down here. Tower should be coming up. We got Roost Knights at the ready. They should win it, 100%. And great. So then we can just garrison here, deal with that, and you guys attack. Okay. So yeah, we got, I think, most of the relics. No, we didn't. I don't know why he did that. Okay, let's get you, and um, the other one is right here, so he's actually able to take that. Okay, archers, and uh, the relic is down there. Okay, that's right. There was another relic. Could have sworn I got at least four, and he got the fifth one. Just idling a million bills right now. Okay. So towers, and uh, you guys garrisoned up, so we're going to need to do this. Get the upgrades here. And cool. Get another archer range. Oh yeah, a little counter rating. I wasn't expecting him to get out of his uh, get out of his aggression here. Okay. So we got some bills back here, which are pretty vulnerable. And these guys, can they do anything here? They can. Set up that, and we can get some knights coming this way. Aha! The brave warrior monk, able to hold his own. All right, boys, come clean this out. So we got a lot of relics, but you know China's got they got some schemes. And our Roost Knights get in there, clear those guys out. Okay, is that Relic still down there? I don't think so. I think we got it. All right. So the Boyar's Fortitude is, is almost ready. Need to get you guys. And can we get any sort of raid into the base? We can. We can go torch this down. And berry bushes for now. Just desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't know what he's like planning to do with these bows. We can just delete them. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so you guys. You guys. Looks like it's just a couple Spearmen. We need to set up some farm eco. Let's go grab that and grab a couple of you guys. Do this. And go grab the boar on the top. Um, the berry bush people are, they're, they're trying their best. All right. Looks good. All right. Cool. Garrison, you guys up. Archer is coming around. Let's get a spring emplacement and uh, we can go ahead and set up another hunting cabin here. Because why not? And uh, let's grab these archers before we decide to take this fight. And we, yeah, we have map control, but the problem is his eco is probably like just straight up bananas, like crazy. All right, let's move in there. See if we can get a little bit of harass going. We'll do this and uh, continue chasing these guys down. So let's go this way and see if we can gather up and take down the spearman. Okay, he's trying to get out here. Did we not delete these walls? Did they not let us through? 
Maybe he built more walls there. Who knows? All right. So yeah, those spears will get taken out. These guys need to get back on gold. A little bit sloppy. A little bit sloppy, but it's all right. And uh, let's get some men at arms as well. Just to, you know, have a little bit more of a, a fun army here. All right, so it looks like we've gotten into the base. And you come down here and here. So yeah, we need to try and win on sacred. Okay, a lot of bills here. Nice. We're going to get quite a few. And I think we can win this fight. Okay. Let's do this. And you guys can set up another tower right here. And it uh, looks like we did finally get that other relic. Get you guys moving up. And yeah, the Roost Knights are dominating those Palace Guard. They're they're doing great work against them. Yeah, looks great, man. Palace Guard are not good against Roost Knights. Roost Knights are pretty jacked in combat. Although with the TC there, yeah, it's providing a little bit of supporting fire. Archers coming in should help mitigate the spear pressure. Let's do this and uh, keep making farms. Like true fishing, like fi just fishing on this map isn't amazing. Uh, we can start getting some crossbows in there too. Okay, let's do this and uh, go set up a tower up there. Now we can attack in. We have this being grabbed, which is going to put the timer on him because then he won't be able to just, you know, chill out. Okay, let's get some stone. Looking awesome. With Roos, you can build the multi emplacement. Okay, this archer needs to just come down here. So let's have the rally point go here and here. Okay. So yeah, his, his eco's got to be crushing mine though. Like 100%. But we've done some okay damage, and we have map control, and we have four relics. So, you know, now we just need to get keeps here, and, and wall also attacking his base, just to make it, like, kind of hard for him to uh, get too crazy, right? Okay. How are we looking? Let's get the broad axe upgrade, and uh, we can just keep getting some farms in the back of the base. Let's go see what we got here. Let's just build a house there for now. And we're, we're building, um, we're trying to like gold starve him. Because the thing is, if we keep him in his like little pen here, he's not going to be able to get gold, right? Oh, hello. Nesta B is nice. Well played. Sneaky, sneaky. Nesta B is action, eh? How many bills do we have that we can spare? I think we have a couple. All right, let's get you over here. We have the, the, Roos, uh, the Roos Patriarch guy here who's going to be able to kind of heal this up. And uh, we're saving up for a tower now. Infantry spam. And you can do this. And how are we doing on wood? Not amazing. But let's go here. Do that. And then this. And then. All right. Okay. So we got some pressure on him. We have a decent tower and placements here. So if he tries to go for that sacred, it's going to be a little bit ugly. Fighting this choke point isn't great either, um, to be honest. And we do have a villager coming down who can build a siege workshop. My game plan is to build a, um, a siege workshop there. So let's do this. Buy some wood. Get that food economy going. And yeah, just kind of hold. We need to hold for another eight minutes, which is a long ass time. I could see if he screws up here. Maybe lets me lets me get like a good jump on him. I need to also get more hunting cabins all over the map. Get food upgrade. So let's go like, yeah, he's here. Hmm. We could go like delete this. Take these knights over here and just kind of keep these guys on standby. Looks like he's getting stone walls here. So let's just kind of keep this pressure on. And uh, we need a siege workshop here. Because I can just build rams now with my wood economy, right? Okay, he's, the boy is watching there. Thankfully, Nesta Bees don't do that much damage against those type of units. If he fights me out here, we get, a, we get a good win. Okay, keep the pressure on. Just hope he's not able to go Imperial. Pull you guys back. And uh, we almost have enough for keeps, which is outstanding. And our gold eco is really, really good. Now, what we can also do to kind of give us better chances of winning this game is establish some trade. Um, okay, and we have that boar down in the bottom, so let's uh, go get that with a couple of you guys. All right, so we'll just send some some dudes down there to go get that. And uh, after this, we build you. Try and make it as hard as we possibly can for him here. All right, you guys done this. Let's go grab the resources in the middle. You always want to get those contested resources. You know, take them away from your opponent. And uh, upgrades, yep, looking good. Let's continue on the upgrades. And uh, we can do a little bit of Ramstein action. Okay, so it looks like he's he's eyeing the middle. Yeah, his army's coming over there. Um, we're not like that entrenched, but we can be. No, we can be, yes. Yes, we can. All right, let's do this and then come back, get that. Pull our army over and uh, hopefully we get that keep up in time. Down here, it's, it's not super hard. Let's get a single ram. 
And if we can defend him off here, we're going to be in really, really good shape, I think. All right, let's get an arrow emplacement there just to be annoying. And uh, we also need to get a siege workshop if we can. All right, so the keep's coming up. We got two spring Ald keeps. All right, let's go. We dive his artillery here, so let's do this. And uh, he just loses it because he's not going to be able to protect it. And then we just steamroll his army, I think. Yeah, the Roost Knights are pretty nasty. So we get in, we kill his artillery, then we just go right into his base and, you know, back to back to where we started. And then we just be like, all right, well, you have fun. Here you go. All right. Okay, let's do that. And you guys need to get on the wood here. He'll most likely go for the other one. All right, let's move in here. Roost Knights can just steamroll these guys. And let's push in, attack from all fronts. Get you guys going, build a little tower there. And uh, we need to get some houses. All right, so I don't know if we win this fight. We'll see. Nope, villagers. No, nope, you guys you guys do that. Roost Knights uh, definitely getting a lot of work in. Let's go back to the top. So his food eco might be partially stifled right now. I don't know how we're doing here. It's a little bit hard to tell. Let's get behind the walls. Okay. And uh, we got the keep. So what I need to do now is get a keep on the bottom side. It's, um, it's going to be pretty big. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's get you knocking down this. Okay, it's kind of a pitch fight. It's close. It's definitely close. All right, so we need to get spring support here. So go top and down here. That's where his farm economy is. And we just kind of get behind the walls here and just uh, hopefully survive. All right. Let's do this. Get a little bit of cross map trade going. Looks like we did hunt down the boar. Yep, keep skirmishing these units. Loop a couple of you guys down, 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 like so, just to be annoying. And great, so wood economy is here, and let's get some more archer ranges. One, two, three, four. Got to scale that macro, man. Okay, wow, that's some wild shit. Oh, how did he break out? How did he get out of his pen? Strange, okay. Okay, take down some bills here. I don't know how he got out. I do not know how he got out. Nonetheless, the bottom is, is kind of vulnerable, but we do have a haggard ram back there pushing. Just the, the, the single cheap ram does, definitely doesn't seem like a terrible, terrible choice. Okay. Did he kill some food eco or some shit? I don't think so. I don't think he did. Okay, uh, now we can start getting spring alds to secure that. We need to pull you guys and get the bills uh, to jump on stone here, because that's more important at this point. And the ram did do a, cause a little bit of havoc. All right, so now we need to go down, because what the smart play for him to do would be to go here, I think. Um, are we not mining any gold right now? Oh, shit, I don't think we are. Okay, so let's do this. Let's buy that and get another TC here. So we can, like, try and, you know, if the game does go long, we're kind of we're kind of playing the long game here. All right, so you guys have done this. Let's get another layer of annoying walls here. Set them up. Nope, it looks like Homeboy just wants to fight in the middle, which I'm, uh, I'm game to do. I'm definitely game to do. Burning oil. Do that. You guys go in. Make some man-at-arms. And uh, can we go ahead and get a spring alden placement here, too? We need to be, like, a little bit more annoying. We need, like, another tower up here. Okay, so here he comes. Um, he's not, it doesn't look like he's going to go down here. It doesn't look like it. Let's get into the farms here. And uh, we need to get all our military select, bring them here. Except these, these two can go here. And build gates and gates. All right, let's bring all. He's going to do that. He's going he's gonna to be taking a more or less an all-in here. You guys have finished that stone. Um, so let's go jump on this so we can keep reinforcing. Our gold economy is pretty good because of the... Um, yeah, and you see he's, he's starting to hurt. And this is like a... A roost style of play that is using the the new build speed of the um, the new build speed of the roost. Uh, how many springs do we have here? Let's do this. Let's see if we have any. Like, can we go build a little bit of this and uh, get a little bit of that? So roost palisades got a speed uh, speed increase at which they build. So that was actually a really kind of underrated change that I think is very good. Okay, so it looks like he's coming for it. I don't know. He might be able to get to this other one, although it is kind of walled off. We should do this. The fact that we don't have that walled yet is very, very potato. Because his eco is better than mine. 100%, I would wager. So we could lose a straight open field fight versus him. Um, all right. So let's just like make it annoying for him. And we probably want to get a mango, to be honest, instead of a spring. Okay, where is he going? We got to like kind of take the fight here a little bit. Okay, is he going to raid? I'm not sure what he's going to do. Is he going to go for this one? He could. 
Uh, let's get you guys into the farms here. Looks like a couple knights are riding by. They might be able to shut down my trade. Okay, so let's uh, let's start getting a keep right here. Yeah, see, he tries to tries to go down there. He might be able to get there in time, maybe. I don't know. And he's got he's got a decent little force like here ready to party too. All right, so let's do that. We got 15 bills needing to do this. And uh, oh, he might be might get in there. It's gonna be close. Got a couple of you guys at the ready here. Let's get the spring alds there. Get the mangonel shooting into that mass of archers, and uh, you guys jump up on the point here. Okay, I think these guys will be able to thwart this just with sheer numbers. And do we get those houses up? We did. All right, great. All right, so you guys fight here. We just gotta hold on this point for as long as possible. Mangonel, keep shooting, and you guys keep doing your thing here. Um, spring alds, yes, we need to pop these trebs if possible. And it looks like my army did get cleared off there, but let's pull some bills up to see if we can keep the sacred going. We do wipe his army on the bottom, and also we have some roost knights just like annihilating farmers here. So even if he does get the decap on this, let's have you guys stand in the corner here. Yep, they can just stand to kind of keep him there. And knights, and you guys can repair this. We have an opportunity to back dive him here, so we're gonna get like into his big farm eco and and probably um, probably you know get the W here. All right, so how are the springs doing? Oh, he does have a bit of a bit of stuff. Okay, so let's move up here. We have you guys. Let's do this. Get on the point. And you guys just run in circles around the point if possible. And you guys run circles around the point. Let's get you guys to repair the keep. And yeah, now we have a big army pouring into the back of his base, which is going to be really nasty. Yeah, it's going to be really nasty. Kind of holding on to it. He says GG, I think probably because of this. Yeah, because his whole farm eco is going to get canned here. He's doing villager pulls, so that's how we know it's, these are desperate times. Ah, uh, let's get spring emplacements. Let's get spring emplacements. We hold it, and we're also in the back of his base. Yeah. Let's attack here. Yep, that's it. Woo, still got it, baby. Yeah. All right. Did we miss the top wall? I think we did. No, it looks like we had a full wall here. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so the roost contain. We contained them. They ran out of gold, most likely. Well, let's take a look at the map. Yeah, so they had this node, but that was pretty much it. But this army in the backfield crushing that would basically be the end of the road. And like, yeah, just annoying palisades, all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, he, he pulled bills for the final all in there, but we actually managed to hold the sacred too. All right, so let's go cast the old finals as we slowly climb our way back to conquer. All in due time. And uh, all right, so Gunhound, who's in the final? Who, who can I spectate? Hmm. Oh, yeah. We, we got it, man. We still got it. About to start the finale. We had to restart due to a bad team spawn. You got it. Sounds good. Did the Roost get buffed? No. Well, I mean, they got minor buffs. They're still considered, I think, to be one of the weaker factions overall, but um, I think they're good. You have to play... Um, so Roost Fast Castle is viable. You just grab all the relics with your warrior monks from Abbey. Um, Roost 2TC is viable using um, the trade house, but like I don't like doing 2TC against Chinese because they'll just outpace you. Uh, against Chinese, I either like feudal all in or what I did there, which is a contain. So Roos, the one big buff they got is their palisades now build like in three seconds. It's insane. So you can build like palisade spam and just like trap people in their base and take huge map control. Okay, Dark Hunter, Ezra, or Emperor Jaren. Um, all right. So yeah, they're still in the lobby right now. Sounds good. Okay. Outstanding. Just getting the final lobby all set up. Roost Rush in Feudal is actually surprisingly viable because they have early knights and Kremlin produces free Bardish. Yeah, I can see that happening. Hey, Ben, you made it to the finals. Nice. Yeah, Roost buffs in FFA. I mean, the Kremlin is terrible in FFA and so are, so are the... Um, the Palisades are okay. Yeah, Roost are still not an amazing FFA. So they're not bad, but um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a tricky one. 
It's a Trixie Hobbit. Okay, setting everything up. Outstanding, and we are all set. David says, big fan turn, your FFAs are the best. They're really fun, dude. I, I love the FFA games. I like sweaty 1v1s too. Don't get me wrong. Like, that was a blast, but there's something truly magical about, like, the backstabbing and, um, you know what would be a really interesting format to try, Gunhound, that we could try for one of our next tournaments? Would you guys be interested in seeing an FFA game where there's no wonders? Like a no wonder week where we have, like, it has to be either domination or sacred. That could be really interesting. Although those games might go like 10 hours is my only concern. If you get like two really determined players entrenched against one another. Oh yeah, that could be rough for sure. Okay. So let's load in here and have some fun. So this is the team tournament, guys. Everyone has an ally. If you missed the first round, we should, we should um, you know what we should do? We should do a team... Here, this is what we need to do, guys. A no wonder tournament, but we put them on this map. We put them on the Black Forest. So it's just forest choke points with no wonders. Just pure hell on earth, misery, grinding attrition. That sounds magical. We did that literally last night, says Arena Emperor, and it became a four hour game. Oh, really? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, some, one of you guys says two and a half hours. The other one says four. Two and a half wouldn't be the worst, but I won that game, but it was miserable. Okay, fair play. Fair play. <laughs> All right. We're going to be loading into the grand finals right now, guys. Okay. Um, yeah. You said Crawford is in the finals? Let me scroll up and see. Um, Emperor, You said Emperor Jaren as well. Okay. I know I know you said Emperor Jaren's name, so you're banned from making FFAs for that. So team one is going to be French and Chinese. Team two is going to be Rus and Holy Romans. Team three is Holy Romans and English. And team four is Malians and the uh, Abbasid, which is pretty interesting. So we have some pretty varied team compositions. Um, no two team comps are the same. We do have a pretty consistent flow of Holy Romans, which I think are a very good steady sieve. Very good for wonder defense. Pretty good consistent gold as the game does progress with the ability to get relics. And uh, yeah, what's not to love about big happy uh, mace boys as well. So English, also really good. I mean, if we look at English and Holy Romans, they could perhaps have one of the most disgusting wonder defenses possible with the uh, Berkshire Palace, Ellsback Palace, next to Berkshire Palace and the wonder, just making these indestructible keeps basically and uh, putting relics in them and whatnot. Could be very, very good. So I'm certainly excited to see what they have here. When uh, Age first came out, that was like, oh, it was like every other game. Oh no, we have the Enchanted Forest Biome. All right. This one's kind of cool. So we're on Mongolian Heights for this map, guys. So, spawning in the north, it's going to be our red and uh, red and green team. So, yes, it's going to be the Christmas team up top. And it looks like that composition is going to be the Chinese as well as the French. Spawning on the southeast, it's going to be Leto the Duke as well as Emperor Jaren. Playing the Malians and Abbasid Trade Empire. So, most likely, these gentlemen are going to be going for some big trade, I would wager. Um, you can get the Malian trade post and then just get big trade routes and, you know, live your best life, which is certainly going to be good. Down to the south side, this is a weird spawn. Um, we do see the teal and yellow team, and they have spawned dangerously close to blue and orange. So, like, blue is very frontal facing as it pertains to the two enemies. Like, these guys have a nice kind of, like, linear uh, deployment where they're, like, in a line with one another, like, facing the enemy. Whereas Mr. Babaducci here in blue, who is teamed with uh, Crawford in the north, A. Crawford, is going to be the spearhead against the south. Now... I think that the positioning here is going to be leading uh, to heavy, heavy aggression here. I think that these two are going to be fighting against blue pretty quickly. And if they're not, I would be I would be thoroughly shocked. So that would be my wager. So we can do a little bit of fast forwarding here in a minute. This is a classic map. It's Mongolian Heights. Mongolian Heights, of course, has the big river. So you can get some uh, you can get some sweet action here and get some good fishing. And, and you saw in my last game that I was playing um, when I was playing the Roos, even though there's only four fishing, like if you can get three or four fishing boats out early, it's generally worth it. And it does the trick. Yeah, I can increase the minimap size. Um, reset camera, change minimap zoom level. There you go. All right. Hopefully that helps you guys see a little bit better. The Christmas team, dude. Yeah, it's sweet. Christmas is, I don't know what, I'm trying to think what my favorite holiday is. I really love Halloween too. Halloween's really fun. Halloween's a really fun one. I don't know. There's something just magical about it, but Christmas as well. You know, as of Christmas, I think was like a little bit more fun when I was younger, you know, when all your, your, your you know, your family's around and it kind of still has that magical feeling to it, but. Yeah, still fun, still fun. 
Yeah, this is a special biome created by Relic, so. And Relic has been, I've been having a lot of fun with Company of Heroes as well as Age. I'm pretty happy with the games Relic's put out this year. It makes up for the Dawn of War 3 launch that we had a couple years back. But um, no craziness yet. No proxy towers. Let's do some fast forwarding, catch up to the live state of the game. Abbasid setting up their House of Wisdom, very, very standard stuff. Uh, opting to build the House of Wisdom close to their base, which is good in uh, Team FFA. So how it works in Team FFA is you can't be eliminated unless all of your allies' landmarks die as well. So it certainly changes up the dynamic of things. So let's go back to regular speed here. Pause and go live. And okay, sometimes it takes like a second. It, it gets momentum and it gets going a little bit too quick, uh, quickly for sure. Yeah, I think Halloween is the best con best holiday for sure. I, I love it. Although honestly, if for those of you guys who aren't in the United States, which I would wager most of you guys are stateside, many of you, um, Thanksgiving is pretty sweet. That's one that I really look forward to. Yeah. So Kremlin from the Rus here, coming in for Teal, and uh, looks like he's going to be setting up the uh, the old Kremlin, and uh, that's interesting. Golden Gate is one of the most powerful landmarks in the game. The ability to just trade for stone at a super uh, cheap ratio in the late game essentially allows you to just go go for a, a wonder. That's how Rus win in FFA. Like in the last game when Gunhound and I were kind of banking on a wonder, I was able to instantly teleport to 6,000 stone by just saving up charges on my Golden Gate. I don't really see the uh, prevalence and advantage that you're getting from the Kremlin, which does give you a little bit of action, but um, but yeah, we'll have to see. Down to the Southwest, we got to, okay. Okay, guys, it's, it's all making sense now. We are about to see some heavy aggression. We're gonna be seeing a Mindwork Palace with Ramstein, Duhast, and we're gonna be seeing a Kremlin with Bardish infantry, probably bum rushing the English here. It makes sense now. I know I was kind of, you know, Given some, uh, given some uh, criticisms there to the uh, Kremlin play, but if they are going to be trying to wipe out the other team really quickly near them, the Kremlin isn't terrible because it can uh, give you some like cheap halberds to kind of uh, help your rush, essentially. Up on the north side, we do have the Aachen Chapel, so it is going to be Crawford, and Crawford is a really good HRE player. Uh, I've, I've played with him and against him. Well, always against him in FFA games, and uh, he's really good at getting that like HRE relic mass like kind of steamroller style of play going, so it's pretty good. For the Golden Gate, is there any cooldown? It's always one a one-to-one -one ratio, and it builds up charges over time. So River Palisade's going to be coming up for the French. It looks like Dark Hunter Ezra setting up shop here. School of Cavalry building uh, some knights already. And on the top side, it looks like China is going to be opening up with 2TC. We see the early stone, so it's very obvious what's going to be happening here. We're going to be seeing most likely Song Dynasty. A barbecue of the sun right here would be very strong. And then Shatter is going to be able to you know do any number of things there for sure. The screen is blue because of the map. This is the biome that was chosen by the players, and it just looks blue. There's nothing we can do about it, so we just gotta we just gotta roll with it. Okay. On the bottom, we get the Mindwork Palace, and yeah, there's gonna be some Ramstein. Some Duhost is coming for sure. We do have the uh, Bloomery, which is gonna be giving plus one damage. Although, if you guys are Duhost enjoyers, which I, was, I actually listened to that, it was on the it came on the radio today, which is pretty crazy. It was like very very uh, strange timing, considering I was literally just thinking about how that song was a meme. Uh. You want to go Iron Undermesh. If you get early man at arms with iron, uh, armor upgrades, and you're, you can push under two uh, TC super effectively because they have really high armor against the uh, bows and whatnot. So. so yeah, man. Looks like a little bit of a palisade coming up. They're going to be uh, defending their borders, which is interesting considering that they're looking to be aggressive. You don't really need to spend the wood on this if you're going to be the aggressor. But um, yeah, I think they could definitely 2v1 blue, and that would be a really good idea. Because here's the thing, guys. If you can secure your side of the map... What you can do is you can just set up a market and trade across this, and then you'll dominate the other side most likely. Um, if you like, this is very much the dynamic in Team FFA, uh, where it's not like you know last map was different because of the nature of the choke points. But if there's like two teams on each side like facing off, whichever side is able to finish off the other team quicker is usually going to be cackling all the way to the bank because um, the then, then you're just free to do whatever you please. So we do see the uh, Burgrave Palace. So it is going to be a burger rush. That's a really, really fast castle there from Evan. So uh, well played. Right at around the eight minute mark, which is, you know, you got to know what you're doing to do that. And the English are going to be super vulnerable. Granted, they do have a second TC, uh, but they are nowhere near Castle Age. Looking at Mr. Babaducci here, um, he's going to be making longbows with no upgrades and no standing army as of now to fight off uh, a burger rush. So the bottom side, I like what they're doing. See, in 1v1 FFA, or I guess a true FFA where you're on your own, um, Okay, do we have a burger? We had a burger rush top two. Oh, wow. Okay. So Crawford might be able to defend this. Ca uh, Crawford went uh, HRE burger as well. And he already has a bunch of men at arms out on the field. He's actually ahead of Evan. So Evan's going to be a little bit behind. Evan does have the advantage of the Mindwork Palace. So he is going to be a little bit more upgraded compared to the Aachen tech. 
But I mean, there's still, uh, you know, the upgrades are still coming out. So really, I think Crawford is going to be ahead. And Crawford needs to start grabbing relics if he can. It looks like there's going to be spears and men at arms. Protecting his English homeboy, who's on 2TC. English are still gathering a lot of stone, or actually only two. You got a barracks coming out, and it looks like it is going to be Mortal Wombat here as these guys get ready to uh, do a little bit of a fight. On the top side, nothing too crazy. Malian setting up the Saharan Trade Network. Um, we do see Dark Hunter Ezra doing a little bit of raid here. Ezra is also a very strong player. Um, Ezra able to come in and uh, shut down the pit mine, or at least push the villagers off. So Leto Atreides going to need to get some Donso out. It looks like we already have seven or eight Donso queued up. But to take down this many French Knights, you would need probably six, uh, probably like eight, eight to nine Donso to take four French Knights. Maybe maybe seven or nine in that range, depending on upgrades and the javelin throws they get. On the backside, Abbasid uh, going multi-TC, setting up a barracks, going to be getting some Spearmen out. So their eco will be ahead of Dark Hunter Ezra. Um, maybe not the Chinese, although China looks like they're getting a little aggressive as well. What is China doing? Nope, never mind. We got a second TC Song Dynasty. But yeah, aggression on both sides to an extent. So Duhast is gathering here. It looks like Palisade Wall is being built by Orange to protect his ally. And the Duhast for uh, Crawford does seem a little bit stronger. It seems it seems like it's ahead. He's got 11 men at arms out compared to his opponent who only has four. Um, granted, there are crossbows coming out, which could even out the fight. And an outpost, perhaps with the Spring Alden placement, might be able to kind of equalize against the aggression. So... Yeah, fun stuff for sure, man. Fun stuff. On the other side, we see Royal Knights still trundling about. Harassing, causing problems. TC able to garrison up and uh, fend off the Knights as the arrows do uh, sink into the sides of the horses there. Now we got a pretty good number of Donso, and the Donso should be able to kind of uh, thwart the aggression. Man, their javelin throws are really good. Donso are an amazing unit. And in general, Malians are just very, very fun to play. They're a super cool unit. Horse going down here. Looks like the uh, villagers just, you know, doing their thing. Preparing to go Castle Age, I would wager. You get the School of Cavalry Chivalry upgrades coming out. I wonder if Ezra is going to keep harassing. I mean, he certainly has some opportunities. There's a lot of villagers over here, which are very vulnerable. You could definitely pile in on those guys. But yeah, nobody's getting uh, too crunk yet. They're both just kind of having a bit of a standoff here. England's going to be strong, though. The fact that, oh my god, England going triple TC. So the fact that English are not being punished for this could be very, very bleak for the south side. The Rus army is okay. It's got a couple stables, which is certainly not bad. I mean, uh, they can trade into men at arms and, you know, do various other infantry units okay, but there are some spears mixed in. But overall, um, if I'm looking at the bottom side of the map, my predictions right now would be a victory in terms of the bottom side engagement coming in for uh, blue and orange. Triple TC English, triple erect TC English, probably going to be getting a white tower up here, like in their opponent's face, which with, with which they can start to siege. And get trebuchets under. I mean, they could even proxy White Tower and just get really, really nasty. Upgrades are pretty much the same. A little bit more upgrades here for Evan, but um, overall, we'll see how that uh, unfolds here. On the top side, we see the Guild Hall being built by the French. Classic. They're going to build stone walls around it, and then they'll build the, their Wonder right here. Uh, so then they can't get landmarks sniped without their Wonder basically dying, which is very, very smart. But yeah, the English Triple TC is, is a cool playstyle. I actually like it a lot. Um, because then you can go White Tower, and White Tower in the new meta is really 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 good because it can just rapid fire just produce things and uh let's go ahead and read the tooltip to clarify it but yeah it acts as a keep but it works 100 percent faster so english normally struggle to get like crossbows out to deal with armor um that's one of the reasons why hre burger rushes were good against them but now they can build white tower and just pump out crossbows 100 percent faster which is crazy good it's crazy good basically two archery ranges instantly right or two of any tech building for the english uh they get from the white tower here and yeah still doing a good job they got a sustainable farm eco, and really, um, the Roost player is just on one TC with a high trade house, which isn't even that... I mean, it's okay. It's getting 183 per minute, but yeah, this is looking... I mean, Kremlin is just terrible. It's it's not contributing a whole lot. Um, it's I mean, it's not terrible in 1v1, but in this situation, it's pretty much useless. It's just a shitty arrow tower in your base with a little bit more HP. So yeah, the Duhost is coming. The mine work, uh, not going to be stopping that momentum as we do see relics being grabbed. Let's see what kind of relic control we have. We have triple relic coming in from HRE. They don't have any special benefits to the relics since they didn't go with the Ragnets, but it's still nice in late game if you're defending a Wander to pop those up. So the Duhast is coming, blasting off the loudspeakers. It does get a little bit of a flank, and now the villager is going to be getting karate chopped by an angry horde of armored boys. And they decide to torch down the walls just to, you know, take a little bit of the stone. They get the two-handed weapons. And we do see Crawford getting the mace upgrades. Okay, definitely you want the mace upgrades if you're fighting fellow Holy Romans. Um, with two-handed upgrades, they're going to be dealing 14 damage. With the maces, uh, on the other hand, will be doing 19 damage against heavy armor. So 
the men at arms for yellow will outtrade the orange men at arms until he gets the mace upgrade. So Crawford really needs to get that. Otherwise, I mean, he could just zerg his opponent, but yeah, you're going to want to get that for sure. Yeah, the cliff face here is pretty insane. Like here, you just get some stone walls and towers here. You know, wander in the corner with L's back as well as Berkshire Palace, which is probably what I would do if I were these guys. We got crossbow spam coming out from the English, which is very good. Uh, looks like they're going to be trying to 2v1 here. Whereas the Roos is very weak. Um, they they basically just have... Uh, I was zoomed in. Sorry about that. I was like really zoomed in there. They don't have like a crazy good eco. Um, I guess they could try and get a second TC now to boom a little bit. But yeah, it's a little bit late for a boom. On the other side, nothing crazy going down. A little bit of a... You know, early castle skirmishes as we do have the Sofa and the Donso battling. And it is a 2v2 fight. But it looks overall like Emperor Jaren as well as Leto Atreides are going to be able to push them back. The Abbasid Spearman with the Phalanx upgrade giving them extra range. Backed up by the Sofa. The Sofa able to ride these guys down. Getting an advantageous fight versus uh, Shatter and Dark Hunter Ezra on the top. And the French might regret going so aggressive now with those knights. Because they invested a lot. And the other team was macroing a little bit better in terms of eco. So... Yeah, the crossbows just turned and fight. The Jugnu going to be prison shanked by all these spearmen and then rode down by the sofa. So there they go. And they are able to get the victory as the Southeast Alliance, or I guess the West Eastern Alliance, yeah, just the true East, are able to get the dub in that little skirmish here. But yeah, nobody's going to be able to push. I mean, there's a Barbican here. China has good macro. They're pushing out a lot of crossbows. And there, there's the dreaded proxy Imperial Palace here. Kind of interesting. I guess you could start torching that Imperial Palace or build some rams if you really want to. But I, I'm just waiting for the powder keg down here to explode. There's clearly a big fight going down. We see the keep being set up, so that will that will certainly thwart like instant death. Like before the keep was up, he was very vulnerable to just potentially being killed here. We see the English getting their crossbows. And yeah, the English macro has got to be insane. Babaducci is, is just cackling. Yeah, his um, food per minute is 1700. His gold per minute is really good. And it's only going to get even more nasty as he does get to the castle age, or imperial age, excuse me. Because all these farms will start generating gold for you. And even though it was nerfed recently, English got a ton of buffs in tandem with the little nerf they got to their um, farm enclosures. So England is a scary, scary strong sieve. I mean, I, I would still say in FFA, English and China, when played by good players, are probably the um, probably the strongest, some of the strongest sieves. Um, just in a 1v1 sense, if you get forced into a, a, like a 1v1 grind with them. But again, Mongols are really strong in FFA, uh, so are French. I'm trying to think who I would say is on the weaker end of the spectrum in normal FFA. Probably a Bassid, simply because they're so trade dependent, and if you can't get trade, you're just kind of haggard. Um, despite the buffs they got, they still really, really want trade, right? And a Bassid having only two landmarks in traditional FFA makes them really, really vulnerable to being uh, all in and sniped and things like that. But in Team FFA, a Bassid is way better because you have guaranteed trade, right? You have your opponent, you can get the Spice Roads. You can get all those sweet, sweet trade networks. And uh, yeah, Abbasid and Team FFA, I think, are incredibly good. When your play is your strategy to not... Uh, I noticed a lot of long-distance woodcutting. Uh, you know, Matt, honestly, if there's times where I'm not updating my lumber mills, it's it's usually a lapse of APM. It usually means uh, it slips past my attention or I'm just more focused on other things. You know, uh, not the best... I'm, I'm, I'm a decent player, but I'm not like, you know, I, I do miss things like that. Generally... You should be refreshing your lumber mills pretty often. But um, yeah, for me, it's just because, you know, it slips past my attention. There's more important things. Got to prioritize those old man APMs. So the Roost doing a little bit of a ride by here. They do push by. Um, the towers garrison up, though, and are able to kind of fend them back. It looks like one of the knights is going to be going down. They're going to be riding into the Holy Roman base. And uh, yeah, losing those four knights. I mean, the Roost really don't have much of an army. They only have like 10 units or something like that. Um, it looks like a second TC coming up in the corner. And this is a good call. The bottom side trading is very nice. So well played to this team. Uh, looks like teal and yellow. Uh, they do get some trade going. And uh, they're trading, yeah, on the bottom side of the map, which is not terrible at all. So on the top side, we got knights, Chinese turtling, China, uh, and the French are booming a little bit now. Nope, they're just going for that wonder. So we see the trade going on the top. We see the guild hall is, uh, is starting to gather stone, which is a very, very telltale sign of what's to come. And uh, yes, battle is preparing here. The powder keg, the dreaded uh, HRE blob. We do have a relic in the keep. No burning oil, though. Burning oil, um, very important. HRE men at arms can tank keeps pretty well. But if there's a relic in there, of course, it will do a little bit more damage. If you guys are new to the game, HRE can put a relic in the keeps and uh, it gives it armor, increased damage, which is 35% damage multiplier and all those arrows is pretty damn good. Right? It's going to be like an extra, an extra like 6.5 damage or something like that on each of those arrow shots, which is very, very nice. So yeah, I, I like that. And yeah, a big, a big wall coming. And it looks like there's a, a stone wall coming now. So yellow uh, not wanting any of that aggression that looks to be coming from Crawford. 
What is the English doing in terms of their army? Yeah, Roost Knights are still... Look at this. Oh my god, the Roost Knights are just AFK back here. They're just looking at these yeah. these happy villagers. Now, going to be able to get some decent damage. So not bad. He he, he slept... He, he snuck, past, snuck past enemy lines and is going to end up getting some work in. Couple Spearmen are chasing. Spearmen might be able to win this fight, depending on if the Roost have the Night Sabers. Horsemen coming in, Spearmen on the way. And good micro here from Teal as he uh, does pull back and is able to kind of slip around those bad boys. So... The chase continues. They will eventually get those knights. Certainly very annoying. And uh, I would wager that Crawford wants to bring the hammer down and try and finish these guys off. England, on the other hand, has a university. So English are imperial. They are hard boomed. Um, they're going to be getting elite units soon. And it is going to get real, real nasty here on the bottom, I would wager. Interesting map, for sure. Very interesting map. Oh, It's kind of fun. Like, we played so much mega random. I feel like it's pretty cool to go back to some of these basic maps, right? Like, go back to them. You know, uh, you know, brings me back to launch, to the good old days. Although, honestly, today today is better than launch. Launch was, with Spring Alts having, like, a million movement speed. L's back in the corner. Classic stuff. Wonder Defense. It's how they won their last game. So, um, yeah, you're going to just get an L's back down here. And the Roost can get a fast Sky on the other side. And you are going to be very, very durable for sure. Hey, Gunhound. Thank you, man. I, I greatly appreciate that. On the top side, it looks like the Roost Knights finally being hunted down. Spearmen and Horsemen chasing, and uh, those guys will finally be dragged down as there's going to be some walls built to prevent some of the harass here. Villagers hustling up there, and uh, yeah, they might as well start their game plan. Prelate in the corner, motivating the workers, and uh, no fighting here. It's been very calm. It looks like, yeah, okay, but, uh, the calm is about to end. The eye opens as the siege workshop's coming up. Most likely going to be for trebuchets to try and knock down the walls, and it is going to be Chinese versus the uh, Chinese uh, and the, I believe, French... Yeah, Chinese and French versus the Abbasid and Malians. I'm really shocked that the Malians and the Abbasid don't have crazy trade yet. Let's see what kind of trade we got. So, it's only 41. It's pretty weak trade. They definitely should go across the map like this. If they set up a trade post right here, even though it's more vulnerable, I think it's worth the risk. I think it's worth the risk. 100%. Nonetheless, siege equipment being made. Zonso and Javelin throwers preparing to party. Still no conflict here, which is weird. I, uh, this is a very passive game. A lot of people just kind of Netflix and chilling, not looking to get in there. But um, now we see English aggression coming. Babaducci has a very small army, though. It's only 29 military. I don't know why he's not macroing more. He, he literally has 8,000 food. Like, Babaducci could have a full stack right now. So I think it's just a little bit of a lapse in macro. But again, you know, it can be tricky to manage everything. So, you know. You see Crawford has a huge erect army. And the English have a very small force. But now they're starting to macro properly. Yeah, we see... You see dudes coming out here. We see barracks coming out. Um, he should definitely have like like 10 more production buildings based on his macro. So the fight is on. Will the yellow HRE be able to hold? The desperation keep coming in. And the dew host has come. The men-at-arms are not elite yet for Crawford. He's still in Castle Age. Is he going up to the next age? Not yet. But uh, we do have elite men-at-arms here for yellow. But talk about being heavily outnumbered. Jeez, that is a big steamrolling army. But the Roost Knights are coming around with the flank. That could be quite nice. Crossbow's going to be intercepting them. Men at Arms trying to intercept them as well. But they are going to be getting on top of the Mangonel, which is a good pick. Obviously, you want to take out Siege Equipment as you can. And the Orange Army is piling in to fight Yellow. But they are being shot by a keep. And uh, they are fighting against Elite Men at Arms. But just numbers are numbers. Horsemen getting back here. Keep getting pressed. Crossbow's pushing up from both sides. Overall, though, the Orange Army is just extremely erect and extremely big. And uh, a lot of villagers are being massacred here for Evan. Evan just taking a huge beating here. And that's going to be a really, really hard economic blow as he's now down to 81 eco, which, yeah, and he's torching the keep too, which is really smart. It keeps your opponent from canceling it and getting a refund by doing damage to that building. So even if they don't kill him here, um, this is going to be some nasty damage. And assuming they macro well and keep sending in units, they could probably finish off yellow here. Yellow is going to be paying the troll toll. And that's going to be leaving the roost to kind of hold on their own. And the Roost macro is okay. They do have the Elite Knights. I think the Knights are Elite. No, they're not. They're only Castle Age Knights. So, yeah. This is basically going to be a classic do hosting right here. As we see the Men at Arms from uh, Crawford move again, torching down the TC, and this keep is going to be following. Uh, it doesn't have Burning Oil. It has a cannon emplacement coming, but against mass infantry, you're going to want the Burning Oil. But, um, yeah, you can see how long it takes it to just kill one of these Men at Arms, which has the Battleclad upgrade, which just gives them a ton of armor. English Men at Arms don't do as much damage as HRE ones, but they are tankier, so... We're able to kind of hold that down. But the TC, emergency repairs, attempting to keep that bad boy alive. No aggression on the top, really. I mean, a little bit. Some trebuchet actions from both sides. Okay, never mind. There is some aggression. So there is what appears to be a Malian defensive keep coming up. Chinese of Shatter moving in with Dark Hunter Ezra. And it looks like they're taking a pretty advantageous fight. But now, 
We do have an attempted comeback here, or defense. The uh, Abbasid Mangonels coming up should be able to push back this uh, crossbow army, assuming they can defend their artillery. French Knights looking to get into the Javelin Throwers. They do drag down some of those bad boys. And the Spearmen and Men at Arms getting in big mango shots. Huge, huge mango shot right there. Is going to be forcing those guys back. And his ally, Dark Hunter Ezra, immediately sees the threat. Moves back there, but the Chad Camel Riders able to chase those knights back. Ezra with some good micro, but it's not going to save him against the Camels. As, man, big, big pressure from the uh, green player here. The Chinese having a keep up with trebuchets under them is incredibly strong. Good micro from the Chinese player as well. He's not letting his big blob of uh, crossbows get nailed. And uh, now the Mangonel is going to be switching onto the keep here. Trying to actually snipe the trebuchets too. Okay, getting a little bit spicy, but yeah. This is looking like it's going to be straight up do hosting down here. He's like... Yellow is being forced to listen to uh, some Ramstein on the loudspeakers here as we do see trebuchets coming in from the English. Nice intercept by the Bruce player, but it's it's basically just buying him a little bit of time as his standing army and production isn't that good. Uh, he's got a couple mangoes coming in, but the Duhas will be able to deal with them as well. So it looks like Crawford and Mr. Babaducci are going to be coming out as early favorites in this game. Um, having a, a late game English macro is just insane with the infinite gold and full bottom map control is going to be very big. Nice Mangonel shots, but the Mangos are instantly going to be due hosted. And now Crawford is elite as well. Uh, he doesn't have army tactics yet. When you get elite army tactics, the HP of the men at arms goes over 200, which makes him as tanky as many cavalry units. But for now, they're um, you know they're just kind of raid bossing on foot. So Teal's going to pay the troll toll next. Kremlin will do nothing. It's it's a useless landmark in uh, FFA in my opinion. The only time I would recommend the Kremlin in FFA is if you're in the Thunderdome. If you're in a map where like you're really really surrounded. Although, like, if you're doing all-in feudal, like, I can see a proxy Kremlin being okay. Um, but they did not get aggressive in feudal like I thought they would. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Up here, we still have some heavy fighting. This seems like a more even fight. Both sides back here kind of scrapping. We got trebuchets exchanging fire in both directions. A couple camels and a little bit ahead of themselves going to be riding in there. But they do get last samurai by some of these uh, elite crossbows, able to kind of uh, push them down. Who's not Imperial? Leto Atreides certainly needs to age up. Let's see how far he is. Um, he's in the ballpark. He's spending... I think he's been buying stone, but Leto Atreides' is eco is in the pits of hell. God damn. He's only got 58 villagers right now. He does have the Fulani Corral, which is a good landmark in FFA. It gives you a lot of extra food. So that's going to be kind of keeping him in the game in terms of food eco. Oh, but his keep goes down before he's able to build it. So the Abbasid uh, are really going to have to probably carry this top fight. Emperor Jarn's going to have to do it. Leto Atreides... I think a lot of his eco has been getting hammered in some of the frontal conflicts they've been having here with the Chinese and French. On the bottom, the Duhas sending continues, and I would imagine Crawford's going to come claim his prize. There's going to be some prelates coming down here to grab these relics. So prelate here, prelate here. Let's get all those goodies. Cannon towers coming down in the back, but the Duhas cares not for this, and uh, will continue its pressure. As the English men-at-arms blob and crossbow blob should dominate the Rus in combat, although the Rus do have five or six mangonels here. So they will be able to hold back crossbows for now until the English are able to get some sort of a response. But yeah, they can just focus the HRE player and eliminate him from the game. But um, I mean, he'll still be in the game. But yeah, they, they take back his ability to produce units and actually be like a viable um, ally. So TC goes down. That's pretty painful. Looking at the eco here of Evan. Evan is sitting at um, 74 eco still. So he did save a lot of his villagers. And it uh, looks like he still has his trade economy going. He's got villagers on berry bushes. So, you know, if somebody were to come in and, you know, provide some divine intervention to these guys, maybe. Looks like they just barely held on, but, you know, they should really keep the aggression going. And they did steal the relic, so one relic has been stolen. The other one will be stolen shortly, I would imagine. And the Bruce able to get the job done here. Yeah, they, it looks like they are. Knights doing their thing, and, uh, yep, the old keep is, uh, is going up. Not going to be going quietly into the night, that's for sure. Yes, let the camels feast. And the camels are feasting, but... I don't know if they're going to be able to kind of stop this. It seems like Dark Hunter Ezra and the Chinese player have like a more powerful, uh, com not combination of factions, but if you combine their like their their power levels between the two of them, you can see the scores kind of reflect that as well. 8.1 and 7, so that's like around 15. Whereas if you look at Babaducci and Atreides, um, they're sitting just over 10k. So overall, I think the power level of the Chinese and French alliance is going to be a little bit stronger than that of the um, Abbasid and Malians at this point. But that's not to say they're, you know, they're defending. And maybe there could be some politics coming into play. Like, if if you're on the top side and the bottom is getting, you know, taken over by, by one team, what you should do, like, if I was in this situation and I saw that landmarks are being destroyed for yellow and they're getting steamrolled, and if yellow was able to confirm, like, hey, I'm getting steamrolled here, okay? Uh, I would be like, guys, maybe we should have a ceasefire top until we can deal with the Southern Alliance who's getting a little bit too strong and taking over the map, and then we go back. But I mean, 
It's hard to say. Sometimes landmarks getting destroyed doesn't mean somebody's losing. It could be a snipe. You would need more intel than that. So Bruce trying to secure. Yellow just straight up cannot even produce an army. And it looks like the English army is going to be gathering here as we do see some knights coming in to snipe the trebuchet. Good play there. Uh, Teal able to get the pop. And uh, we do see crossbows shooting in. Uh, hand cannoneers from English. And like, yeah, England can straight up mouth breathe right now. They can straight up mouth breathe. They can just, they can just ban men at arms and any number of other units. They can just brute force keeps down cannon towers. Although this is a nasty emplacement. I mean, we have like all these stone towers, like, you know, three of these towers is like the equivalent of a keep in terms of durability. So it's, uh, it's pretty hard to stop. On the top side, it looks like the Chinese and French Alliance continuing their aggression. The French Knights, what they should be doing here um, is riding past. They should be riding past this army and going to find the uh, the eco of the Abbasid. Because if they do that, it, it'll break the back of the army. I mean, they could brute force this fight and maybe win it, but overall, that would end the game. If the French Knights got back there and started just massacring the Abbasid eco, it would basically cut off the uh, flow of resources and allow the Chinese to maybe even win a 2v1 here. But nonetheless, the Bruce Knights can choose to, or the French Knights can choose to fight. But fighting Camel Riders is, a, is not a good fight for them. Camel Riders um, mitigate their damage. They get a bonus for his cavalry. It's very strong. Looks like another Chinese keep being built right here that is going to be pushing the Abbasid and Malians back even further. The Ramstein comes as we do see uh, TCs being torched and just, just wave after wave of units moving in. And the English are just straight up sending bodies into these buildings with no siege equipment. Um, we see Springald shooting the tower. Springalds don't do a whole lot of damage against buildings. And yeah, it's, it's only a matter of time. It's going to take time. Not the cleanest, you know, beat down here, but... Yeah, they are. They they need to just get back here. Yeah, and they're shutting down trade. We see Holy Roman troopers in the back line, going to be just butchering the traders, taking down some of the villagers on gold, and this is going to be the troll toll getting paid here. On the top side, it looks like it's a bit of a standoff. Well played by Leto Atreides as well as Emperor Jarn. You know, they're fighting from behind. Their opponents are basically completely uninterrupted. They have high quality trade, bringing back 134 a pop against the trade on this side, which is only going to be, you know, 33. So, Dark Hunter, Azra, and Shatter looking very, very strong. On the bottom side, we do also see some very big strength coming in from Crawford and Babaducci. Those two gentlemen holding on. And, uh, yeah, it's really going to be who's able to deal with their threat first. This is like, and I would say like seven times out of ten, eight times out of ten, the person who deals with their threat first wins the game. That's been my experience in these 2v2 tournaments. 100%. So, we see the Mace Men coming in. We see the Traders being karate chopped down as these guys do uh, run across, getting some nice shanks on those bad boys. And the Ellsback Palace stands firm. They're really going to be tough to kill. So we see the uh, Sphere of Influence. El yeah, these are all within Ellsback Influence. It creates like an influence network, so it's able to reach quite far, actually. England needs to get some trebs or something. We also see a big idle HRE army here, but the HRE are just butchering these guys. Like, they are just in the absolute pits right now. Absolute pits. Traders going down. I mean, the Roos still have some food eco, but the Roos base is very vulnerable, too. If the Holy Romans wanted to drag this army over and just like start attacking the Roost mainland, it's completely undefended. I mean, there's a couple of trebuchets which could do a little something something, but overall they're not going to be able to do too much. Crawford moving in, going to be sniping the trebuchet down, or the Mangadel, excuse me, and that's going to basically allow these guys to keep causing havoc back here. The Chadback Palace is there, it doesn't have any fancy upgrades or anything, and yeah, the trade eco is completely down. As the English army moves in and just continues to try and brute force these towers. But, I mean, brute forcing them isn't that good of an idea now. They do have the 33% damage reduction, so that's just going to be an unholy nightmare. Yeah, the top side might just win on Wonder, too, guys. If we look at Dark Hunter Ezra right now, um, it's an okay bank. He doesn't have that good of a wood bank, actually. But, yeah, I mean, they could totally win with a Wonder. They're not, like, entrenching yet, but yeah. Really good defense, man. The Abbasid and uh, the Malians putting up a good fight despite being massively, massively, massively behind in terms of economics here. Do I have any water left in this cup? Let's see. Hmm. We do indeed have some water, my friends. Life is good. The Rohirrim, when will they arrive? I don't know. We'll see. We will see. More troops come down here. Men at arms and horsemen. Of the HRE stand at the ready, but the valiant defense of the teal and yellow team continues. You need some trebuchets, man. I don't know why they're not bringing trebuchets. They, they literally could turbo produce trebuchets at 100% speed from the White Tower. They could have like four of them out really quick. And then they could just knock down all these defenses and basically just end the game. Because um, the problem with not finishing these guys quickly is that if you if uh, it's going to let the top side potentially finish their enemies quicker. And then they, like, if you give Dark Hunter Ezra and Shatter Days, um, if you give them like a huge, huge trade cross map, that's going to be like a 400 gold trade route. Like, and you're just basically dead at that point. Assuming Ezra and Shatter know how to use 
like that gold yeah and see ezra is, is doing the right thing now instead of like trying to just like bash your head against their armies and static defenses in the front you ride back you shut down their trade you know a little bit of subterfuge a little bit of uh pushing in the back corners you know you do all that sort of good stuff so that is pretty much it so elite royal knight's going to be moving down here and uh yeah looks like raiding coming down on both sides we do also see some chinese palace guard running by one of the most annoying things in the game Palace Guard are really quick. Their movement speed is, let's go ahead and look here. Yeah, 1.38. When you look at like basic infantry, yeah, it's like 1.25. So these guys are really fast, really furious. Looks like there's going to be a keep coming up, which is a good idea from Emperor Jar. And just kind of garrison in there. But the villagers actually going to get massacred. So now they're starting to take some big eco damage. They didn't garrison any of those villagers. And uh, that, that actually hurts pretty bad. Looking at the eco of Emperor Jaren, I would imagine he's got a lot of extra villagers. But he's down to 98 after that. Um, the French Knights should not fight this though. They should keep running. Over on the bottom, trebuchets have finally arrived, and uh, yeah, looks like it's going to be... Yeah, okay. So he said, the English have had enough of these games, and uh, they're going to be getting their trebuchets out, and they're, they should knock this down. And assuming their allies are here, they can protect the trebuchets pretty damn easily. Like, the Rus aren't going to be able to flank them, assuming they protect them. The Rus do have some knights. Their elite knights not fully upgraded yet, but the trebuchet is getting in range right now. On the top side... Still a little bit of battling going down. It's our country, Ezra, going to be fleeing with his uh, his medieval tanks. The French knights with their massive HP pools turning and uh, taking down quite a bit of the wood villagers. And uh, still at 97 eco, so he does have that Abbasid villager production going. He's probably double or triple TC. But yeah, the plays like that are really good. Just constant pressure and palace guards sneaking through. You're just sending these little harrying forces to go do their things. Yeah, sorry about the map biome. Next time we do the tournament, I'll make sure we don't have this biome. Um, this is the new map biome. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on for sure. Especially the blue on blue of these forces here. Ooh, a culverin. Well played. Yeah, culverin's a great choice. Um, that's going to be sniping the hell out of these things. And it looks like they are going to be going after the culverin. English men at arms do drag it down. Trebuchet's slowly getting a little bit of progress going down here. As the HRE are going to be moving up into the roost base. And they should win it. Um, yeah, mangonels here are going to get torched. Like, every single one of these mangoes is going to pay the troll toll, which is a big loss. And now, guys, we got the old Kremlin. I don't know where the Kremlin is. Yeah, it's back here. You could levy some militia. You want to levy some militia here? Some haggard spearman infantry to try and battle off this HRE blob. Yeah, and they, they could just, like, say, screw going into this entrenchment here. Let's just go take out the Roost player, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. So the HRE able to defeat the Roost in combat, and the Roost are pushed back. All they have is their Kremlin, and the base is very vulnerable. Uh, very, very vulnerable. Most of their trade eco did get karate chopped, but they still have more. Yeah, they still have a fair amount of trade going down. Up on the top side, we have a standoff. They do have a standoff here, as so we do see the uh, walls coming up. So the Abbasid, or the Malians, excuse me, building a big wall network. A lot of camels, who are only veterans, mind you. Um, I believe these guys should be elite. The elite camel riders are pretty jacked. Uh, the camel archers want to be upgraded as well. He's got a lot of those. And uh, looking like it's, uh, yeah, battling on both sides. Uh, interestingly enough, nobody decided to go cross river. Like, they could have attacked the people on the other side of the river, but both, both teams... Uh, unlike our previous pod, actually opted to just go for the player on the same landmass as them, which is the the correct choice. Uh, the people across the river can be isolated and choke points easier. You want to take you want to take out the threat that can actually uh, push your mainline here. So, time to shine, Kremlin. You know what's going to happen to the Kremlin? It's going to get killed by four trebuchets in like ten seconds. I I hope he levies some militia. That would be pretty funny, but yeah, I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, I mean the HRE entrenchment's pretty great. Certainly a pain in the butt to get through, but uh, if you if you can't destroy it, just go around it. And that's what they're doing now. As the first team to fall is probably 100% going to be teal and yellow. 100% teal and yellow. So those guys are going to have to go down here. And on the top side of the map, we do see a lot of crossbows coming in and uh, cannons as well. And uh, they do win the fight. So it looks like the Malian and Abbasid army was steamrolled. Yeah, I mean, China, like, like in Zhugnu, shredding light armor is pretty nasty. HRE infantry. Uh, no, those aren't HRE. Those are French. Yeah, I always, I always see those men at arms. I'm like, HRE, but no, French can make them too. It's just weird seeing a French player not make knights. Cannons in position. These are French cannons. They're not anything special, but they look pretty cool. They continue to move up as we do see the Malian and uh, the Malian and Abbasid Alliance being pushed back. The fact that they're using veteran archers, which quite literally will deal like one damage against these men at arms, is uh, really, really brutal. So, yeah, they're, they're going to get pushed back. And uh, could start to actually uh, fold here. On the bottom side, look at that. The Roos actually trying to establish a bit of a proxy base here. So the Roos build another TC and are going to be building a bunch of houses here and uh, are trying to relocate their base, but I don't think it's going to save them. As we do see the trade house going down. Oh, look at the old Kremlin. Kremlin doing its thing. Trebuchets nuking the buildings down. HRE just, just doesn't care. They're just moving in. They're just causing as much havoc as they can. A couple horsemen trying to come around and flank, but it looks like the English player 
going to be defending against the horseman flank. They've had their artillery pushed a lot this game. So clearly don't want that to happen anymore. So high trade house is down. Uh, main TC is down. Kremlin is down. And uh, was where's his last landmark? Was that was that all of them? Yeah, we have the, the town center, the Kremlin, the high trade house. And I could have sworn he had another landmark somewhere. Did he build it up here? No, he didn't. He, maybe, maybe I just missed it. I don't know. What it's, oh, it's down here. That's right. It's the Chad Skaya Tower. And Chad Skaya within the influence of the Ellsback, although Ellsback doesn't affect allied buildings. Okay, so I, I was wondering if it did. That would be very, very strong. So this is going down here. Good night, sweet prince. And they're just falling back to the corner of the map, essentially. Which is pretty fun to see. Like, they're just hunkering down on the edge and being pushed, and they have a really good entrenchment here. But if the English player and the HRE player, uh, team blue and orange, are determined enough... There's absolutely nothing that this team can do to survive. The trebuchet pressure coming in from England, and England isn't even utilizing its network of castles. If Mr. Babaducci was setting up like towers as he was pushing, like the amount of DPS coming out from the trebuchets would be um, exponentially better. On the top side, it looks like we have a pretty decisive fight as well, and now we're seeing the dreaded Reaganomics, which is always a sign here in this game of losing, uh, because you know you're trickling in units to fight a critical mass army, which is just bullying you back into the shadow realm, right? So. We are seeing that. Cannons moving up, and uh, looks like Culverin's coming to try and uh, stem the bleeding, but that is five cannons here, which could probably pile in and just kill that Culverin. But it looks like Lado Atreides is microing that quite well, trying to do a little bit of scooting and shooting. But Dark Hunter, Ezra's men at arms, able to get in and push them down. Trebuchet sieging, and this could be the beginning of the end for this empire. And how's the trading looking? Um, is it better trade? Looks like they're doing north to south trading, and how much are they bringing back? 79. Okay, the trade is finally better for them, but. Honestly, Dark Hunter Ezra and his ally on the other side have been cackling pretty darn hard. They've been cackling very, very hard here. On the bottom, yep, the momentum continues. We do see the Trebuchet Legion pushing into the base. And uh, there's still a handful of landmarks to take down. Men at Arms moving in. They do spot the Ellsback Palace. And uh, the Spaskaya will be discovered shortly after that. And then I think that would actually be all the landmarks. Yeah, he's building towers here with cannon emplacements, which is smart. That will keep their opponents from playing like gremlins, from channeling their inner Spiegel and uh, rebuilding the landmarks and just kind of scurrying around the map and whatnot. The fact that the Rus have a little base here is certainly cool. Getting knights out and keeping their eco going. Very, very impressive um, under all this pressure to be kind of surviving here, but I don't think it's going to save them as Ellsback does, it doesn't have a relic in it either, so it's not going to be like truly unstoppable because normally it gets 33% less damage, and then if you put a relic, it gets 50% more armor. So it just becomes this unholy raid boss to take down. But um, looks like on the top, Lado Atreides and his ally actually surrender. Which is interesting. They surrendered. Um, they could have fought a little bit longer and tried to work some politics, but I would wager that they just felt it was it was truly doomed. But that is going to give the top team a big advantage. The fact that they uh, they tapped out a little bit earlier means that the top team is going to be able to start establishing their trade. Look at that. Oh my god. Dark Hunter Ezra, as well as his ally Shatter here, able to get the immediate markets going. They know. They know what this is all about, and they are capitalizing on that. This is going to be a north versus south battle, guys. It's going to be very interesting. Well played, Leto. Well played to you uh, and your ally, Emperor Jar. And you guys are chads, as always. Always a pleasure to see you guys playing some of the less uh, picked civilizations. Where was Allied Trex tonight? Where was his Delhi? We didn't get to see those guys in action as well. Uh, Delhi, Delhi seems pretty good in FFA now. The fact that you can get those cheap keeps. I uh, I think uh, next time I might actually try Delhi out. We'll have to see. The camels didn't feast today. No, the camels uh, certainly are not. Spaskaya Tower being repaired. I legitimately think it's one of the last landmarks they have. Yeah, and Chad Sky is getting trebucheted down by a lot of trebs. And yeah, they need to hurry, though. They need to hurry. Look at this. We see the uh, the red HRE player discovers the roost base here. The roost basically just pillage all this gold as one like final last laugh. But yeah, that is going to be the end as this landmark is about to be finished off. And I think that's their last landmark. I don't think there's anything left. Like all the HRE landmarks are dead. And then um, all these static defenses are pretty much going to be non-existent. So Wonder in the corner. Yeah, look at that. Crawford thinking about it. And he has enough. Oh, yeah, dude. It's going to be an immediate Wonder race. If you're Crawford, you pull the trigger so hard. So those players have fallen. And now it is a two-on-two -two fight. Well played to all these teams, man. They've all been putting up good fights, making for some really good entertainment. And we got a Wonder coming up already. We have a Wonder coming up already. From Shatter. Where is it? Oh, my God. Where is the Wonder? So it keeps being built. And the Chinese Wonder Rush. Oh, my God. Look at that, baby. China builds wonders. If I'm not mistaken, 100% faster than other teams. 49 villagers. Oh, my God. What a Chad play. And, guys, this is not going to be easy. There's entrenchments. They just need to set up walls. 
and they have stone banks. What a smooth criminal, smooth execution. Now they just get walls up and they just basically have to fight a 2v2, which I cannot tell you how massively difficult this is gonna be for our English and HRE players. Because China is not a late game slouch. French are also a pretty good late game too. They have Red Palace, they have Keeps. Smooth criminals, baby. Great execution. I love it from Dark Hunter, Ezra, and Shatter. They were waiting, and, and this is what I'm saying. Whoever finishes their side first typically has a massive advantage in these 2v2v2v2s. As that gave them time to kind of like anchor down, whereas these guys were like not quite on the same pacing. So now we get to see the aggression coming across and the battle's gonna be starting. It's time to get the forward infrastructure. And yeah, I believe there's a, a natural ridge. Let's see. Um, yeah, there's a natural cliff here. The only problem is trebuchets could go right here and reach it. Like on this cliff, they could easily reach that. So there's one vulnerability where if I was on the bottom team, this would be my target right here trying to get that. Oh, wait a second. Oh my God, I love it. Oh, that's so Chad. Look at this guys. They're going for the sacred victory. So the other team knew that a sacred victory would be on the table. So they preemptively started to set up keeps here, okay? But orange and blue also know this and they get there before the entrenchments can be made. Oh my God, guys, it's happening. It's happening, guys. HRE might be able to get this with the English if they can defend the sacreds. The sacred is being helms deep a little bit. Looks like infrastructure is coming up. Yeah, this is the play. There's no sense in pushing in. And now we have HRE keeps. Oh my God, they're spending all their stone on keeps now. They should build a couple in front though. They, they're putting them all behind, which of course will give good stopping power. But um, dude, the big brain plays. There's actually only two sacred sites on this map, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look. Yep, only two sacred sites on this map. So this is a very viable counterplay, but they need to get there kind of quickly. The Wonder Tracker is, uh, is not stopping for anybody. So where's their prelate? Does he have a prelate coming? Okay. The Chinese are mustering forth to fight, but the HRE might be able to fight them off with the bombards here. They need to get that quick, dude. If they don't get a religious character there soon, I see 18 villagers. They need to get the sacred site. Because right now it's, it's, it's going to be 12 minutes and it takes a good 30 seconds. Okay. Prelate's running there. They got to fight off these armies. For the forces of Ezra and uh, Shatter, they need to snipe that religious character if they can. But it looks like the religious character is going to get it. We see some uh, men at arms coming around here. Villagers being pulled. They got their prison shanks. They're going to go for it. If they can just shank this villager, that... Oh, my God. Yeah, and the prelate's going to be running. He immediately sees this. He needs to run back to his army. Look at the villagers diving in. How much time do we have? 12 minutes left, guys. 12 minutes left. That prelate is going to get popped in the face. Oh, my God. Ezra with the MLG play. Ezra could have just saved the game right there. Like, killing that one prelate might have bought enough time. I don't know if they have more prelates coming in. Let's see. I see another one running from across the map. It's going to be really tight. Uh, 11 minutes and 40 seconds right now. And China's here with a good army, mind you. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like the English are fighting them off, though. And they have all the keeps coming up. And that the fact that that guy didn't get there is massive. Um, the other prelate is hustling across. They need to be just power-producing prelates, guys. On the top side, look at that. Ezra going for the decap here as well. So good. And the, he's getting the decap here. Oh, man. The counter plays, dude. They acted quickly. They acted decisively. They went for the throat and they got the decap. And that crushes the game plan here of the HRE and the English. And the HRE and the English didn't, didn't, they didn't have a, they didn't have good walls here. They just had a palisade. So the players were able to get through pretty quickly. The Wonder Trackers at 11 minutes. Is there any chances that the HRE is going to be able to get that? Looks like there's a prelate here. So they get that. They got that one, right? But now, on the other side, we do not see any prelates here. The English desperately trying to fight this off. They got Manganels coming in. HRE army going to be screaming back across. But the Wonder Tracker is going to be closing sub 10 minutes here very soon. Looks like there's a keep getting set up here, which is pretty funny. Um, oh, no, that's a, that's a, one of their keeps. And is there any chance that they can get a religious character on this? I don't think so. I think Ezra with his cannons... He's got his triple cannons there, and he's able to uh, get some big bombards and push back all these keeps. We see a couple of uh, villagers nearby. HRE coming across. At this point, you just got to attack. The, the, the wonder is going to outpace you. Yeah, his wonder is about to hit sub 10 minutes. So the sacred, um, the sacred site is not going to work out anymore. They have to go for it. But honestly, I think that's probably going to be GG. Like, it seems like Ezra and his ally are very coordinated in their efforts. And not to say that the other team isn't either. Like Crawford and uh, Babaducci are playing very well, but it's a little bit too late to clean it out. They can stop building keeps now. I mean, I guess they could still build them, but yeah, these keeps are 
they're not going to do much for you at this point. Um, they just needed to defend those two points, and they didn't put enough credence in defending this back one. And now it is all out aggression, ladies and gentlemen. No, the biome is very blue because it's a special fantasy biome that um, Relic made for this season. So it's one of the choices here. Yeah, it keeps here, shooting up on the high ground, no cannon placement. Yeah, so this is all in. They're all in now, guys. And the wonder is sub 10 minutes. Dude, nine minutes to get through all of this is so rough. Oh my God, and they have the Great Wall Gatehouse there. So anything up here is gonna get blasted. They got, they got flank walls. And that Christmas tree trade, let's see how much they're bringing back. I'm trying to find a trader that's coming this way. Oh, 389. The trade is so good and tasty. That's so good. Yeah, but the Sacred Timer is no longer an option. So the, the last March of the Ents is coming. Yeah, Ezra has had some really, really good plays. Like his plays were super clutch. Like sniping the Prelate over here was super clutch. Um, shutting this one down. Like, yeah, he is he has been really, really on point. I think Ezra is like a Conqueror level player. He's either really high diamond or Conqueror, con or, or Conqueror somewhere, I'm not sure. Yeah, really good stuff. So we see the Stonewall Gatehouse going down here. And now it's the last March of the Ents, dude. And you remember when Treebeard in the movies, like perhaps we marched to our doom? That is more likely the outcome than the actual uh, book outcome of Isengard there. As we do see the elite men at arms, as well as the hand cannoneers, um, being overwhelmed, mind you. I mean, they have a good army. Like the English, the English HRE army is no joke, but they spent a lot of time playing the sacred shenanigans, and um, that was all time where that wonder was just advancing towards victory. So we got eight minutes here, and they are taking a fight versus the French army. And where's the Chinese army as well? I don't know where the Chinese army. Okay, it looks like they're producing. I feel like China might have too much eco. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. They, they still have a standing army. China's coming across with a decent army, but it looks like the English and HRE armies are, are pushing them back. Yeah, they're getting in there, man. Big cannon shots. And uh, the English hand cannoneers, no network of castles. They need to be bringing up some villagers, setting up towers to make these uh, armies attack faster. It's 50% attack speed is gross. It's like an insane amount of extra DPS, right? Yeah, but this is not going to be an easy, easy, uh, easy time. They still have a lot of ground to cover, and there's a bunch of keeps on the way there. Like a bunch of keeps. And uh, I'm trying to think of like your best bet. Like what you could possibly do. I don't know, man. Yeah, I think you just got to push and, and just hope that you uh, your opponents slip up or slip up on macro or something. Let's look at the bank. Um, China has a pretty good bank. They can produce palace guard and knights all day. Um, with 13,000. And looking at Ezra. Ezra is sitting on an okay bank of food and gold. He at the very least can produce units for the next like three or four minutes before he starts to run out, I would imagine. Um, their units are trickling in. They should be gathering their armies like he's trickling in the men at arms. So a minor misplay there. But you can see they're not really making much progress. Like they're kind of like slowly winning this and like pushing their opponents back. But it is a lot of ground that needs to be taken. Well played by Mr. Babaducci here as well. He's starting to bring up outposts, which will give his artillery 50% attack speed, which is uh, going to be quite strong. We see mangoes. We see bombards. A nice combination of artillery. Chinese army holding. And look at this. Nice play by Shatter here. Setting up walls, just trying to make it as difficult as possible for the uh, for the enemies to get to their wonder in the back, which is uh, which is of course a little bit vulnerable at this point. Trebuchet is knocking down keeps, not bad. Getting rid of some of the tertiary keeps on the side. We see the English crossbows and hand cannoneers blasting at the men at arms, but Ezra wisely going for the artillery again. And that's what you want to do when you're defending and you have static defenses. You don't really need to kill the army as much. Um, it's more about just killing the cannons and trebuchets. So what you want to do in this situation is probably just, I mean, yeah, you can push them back with Mass Arbalist, but like spamming horsemen. If they just made 500 horsemen and just kept chain sniping the um, the trebuchets and cannons, like, because these are all very vulnerable right now. This whole artillery position could be 100% compromised. Um, Sacred Sites are finally taken, and uh, not terribly entrenched, though. There's the one keep there, but Sacred Sites are going to be a little bit off here. Now they're pulling back. They're consolidating their forces. A little bit of ground being made. Looking at the timer, we're at 5 minutes and 45 seconds, and you know what? They're not making bad time at all. They're not making bad time at all, ladies and gentlemen. They are pushing through. Keeps are going down. Ezra and his ally amassing an army here. An army which might be able to win this fight. Um, although the HRE do have a fair amount of spears and land snakes as well. Land snakes will be pretty good at butchering through front lines. And uh, can also close the distance with archers with their high movement speed. Sacred Sites are there. So they have the they have the backup victory condition. So, you know, if they get the wonder, they win. It's just over. You know, it's just over. We'll see if they can, though, man. I don't know. This is a, this is a really, really nice defense. And, yeah, we got... Look at this. More keeps coming up. Oh man, it is it is far away. Like Ramstein is Ramstein an option for Crawford? He's only got three thousand wood. Looking at his ally, a five thousand wood. So the English player could start building rams and just attack moving them. Like you could just yeah, but it's probably not a good idea. I think saving your wood for true artillery is going to be better. Big fight in the pits right here, guys. 
but it looks like Ezra and his ally might have finally blunted the momentum. Granted, the mass mag and L pressure probably will win them these fights. Um, we do see horsemen coming out for Ezra. They're only uh, Castle Age horsemen. Still not useless though. Um, they can dive under the side and start to pick off trebuchets as you can see. But yeah, mangonels are really, really big difference makers in late game blob fights. And uh, the attackers, the orange and blue attackers, do have a lot of those guys uh, you know, putting some hurt on. Another keep goes down. I mean, slow and st steady progress, ladies and gentlemen. But they are at the four minute mark here in about 20 seconds. So time is, uh, is is fading. What is that? What is that song from the 90s? That the, Wilson, the, the, the Wild Wild West one, or was it Men in Black? It's like time keeps slipping into the future. I think that was the uh, yeah the, the Men in Black version of that uh, that classic song. All right, Manganel's blasted away. Big shots, lots of Arbalists going down. It's mainly just artillery here. HRE macroing up well. The supply lines are very far. That that's probably a minor misplay, but. You want to set up um, forward operating uh, production, otherwise it takes like 10 years for your reinforcements to get here. But even with that being said, they're still pushing back. We see some uh, spring alts coming out, making else of their own, and the Chinese player is backering pretty hard. Looking at Shatter's re- yeah, Shatter has 12,000 gold in the bank. He can keep making good quality armies all day. He should be spamming Nest of Bees. Um, the Chinese player should have like five siege workshops and be making like mass Nest of Bees. That would probably win them the fight, and honestly, they could turn it around. For Dark Hunter Ezra, his bank is running out. Hey, Mike, thanks for being a member for eight months. Thank you, thank you. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well, dude. Thank you. Was that Space Jam? Was it Space Jam? Okay, I was close. So the battle continues. The fight is on. Emperor Jarn and chat saying, watching this hole, they don't feel too bad for losing to them. You shouldn't. They seem like a very good team, but you guys were right in it, man. You guys played great. It was a little bit of a, you know, some eco losses early cost you. The big push continues. Good, good pressure from uh, Crawford and Babaducci, but they are running dangerously low on time. They have three minutes left. And I mean, they're kind of getting in range, but not really. There's still so many keeps and they're just falling back and slowly yielding ground. But here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. Though they're yielding ground, there's no supply line, good supply line. So the HRE and the English are still having to run from their base. So the further the HRE and the English go, the worse su their supply lines are gonna be, which is gonna make it much easier for Ezra and um, Shatter Days to hold this push. I love that Ezra is spamming Horsemen now. That's the correct play. Because if you could just tank all these... Oh my god, no. Ignore the Mangoes. Get the Trebs. Trebs are like the one thing that can end this. I mean, he can get into the Mangoes too, but... Yeah, good Horseman dive right there. Classic, classic FFA Wonder Defense. As we see the Counterweight Trebuchets getting taken down, and this Bombard Cannon getting Prison Shanks by the Horseman. The other Bombard Cannon going down as well. And you can see the issue with the supply lines really, really starting to come into play. Looking across here, um, on the top side, we do see them starting to push them back, actually. So again, the supply line's becoming a big variable as well. Do English questions uh, a tower's buff allies? I do not believe so. I don't think they do. That'd be really overpowered. Um, thank you so much, Habits, for the donation, and hopefully that answers your question. I'm fairly certain they don't. Because you, can't, you, can't, you, you don't see the buff here. You can see it on the English troopers, but if you look at the HRE ones, they don't have it. Looks like a Chinese keep's going to be setting up right in the heat of conflict. China with hand cannoneers? Nasty. Um, China has really good gunpowder, obviously. I believe they have additional range, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, they're able to just get some big DACA going down. And yeah, the push continues. But yeah, at this point, you just got to move your trebuchets and just click on the wonder and just hope you get lucky. And um, Ezra's not going to let that happen. Ezra's sitting up here with a lot of elite horsemen. They could easily just collapse down on those guys. On the other side, we see the Chinese holding. A lot of these uh, Zhuganu mixed in with the Elite Palace Guard. Palace Guard really chad units. They're super tanky because of the, uh, the the Imperial Age upgrade they get. Makes them very, very strong. And yeah, there's no way. That's GG. Wonder Tracker, one minute, guys. And we have our champions. Very fun battles and games today. All the games were close. Our first pod game was incredibly close. It came down to like a one second wonder victory. This one, they didn't get as close to getting the wonder, but some really good back and forth, having two big battles on both sides of the map, and then like an immediate rush for the sacred sites, which failed, followed up by a wonder attack, and um, yeah, it was great, man. It was really, really good. GG well played. It looks like the victory is going to be going to Dark Hunter Ezra and Shatter here. So those guys certainly doing good work, and we see the dreaded Manganel defense. And honestly, I'm starting to think that Ezra and Shatter could maybe turn this fight around and maybe even win in an actual um, war. But I mean... Not with the sacred sites being on the table, but yeah, you guys get the picture. Dude, and it's crazy how close the um, orange and blue player were to winning. Crawford and Babaducci, they almost legit got a wonder victory, or sacred. If they had just defended that a little bit tighter, like they probably could have won this. They probably could have won this. Yes, Mike, you did just join the very end of the stream. And that is a victory, ladies and gentlemen, for the Northern Alliance. The Chinese able to hold in tandem with the French ally, Ezra. 
with the really, really good dives on the artillery and the prelates, and of course the Chinese player macroing like the heathen kings of old, both playing very, very well. Looking at the economy of all the players, it looks like the French player had the most gold in the game. The most food was going to Mr. Babaducci, our English player, with the triple TC farms. That was really fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. A little bit of a quick stream, but that's okay. I'm going to take it easy. Go hang out with my wife and get some dinner. I still have time to go grab some food. And on that note, I just want to thank you all for joining. That was a really good time. If you guys enjoyed the stream, do drop a like on the way out. It helps keep the Age of Empires community alive when you guys drop that support. And again, thank you guys for some very generous donations coming in on the early stream. And <laughs> yeah, the no being yelled in chat. No. Thank you to Felix for the donation and Warpug, as well as Habits, Thorfindel, and Dr. V. Appreciate all of you guys. Great play. Really, really nice defenses. Great dynamics in all these fights. It was really fun. And uh, that's going to be it for tonight. If you guys enjoyed it, once again, do drop a like. Thank you to Gunhound, as always. The true, the true chat of the community for uh, hosting these, helping me organize these tournaments, taking some of the work off my back so we can, uh, we can get them going more often. I really appreciate that, Gunhound. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. You guys have a great night. That was really fun. I'll be back tomorrow with something. I don't know. What, tomorrow's Friday? Tomorrow's Friday, I think. Not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. We'll figure it out. Maybe a Total War tournament. It's been a while since we've had one of those, so I think we got to do it. All right, take care of yourselves. See you later. Adios. Dovizenia. That's it. Cheers.